pray that we be one as we and the Father are one. And this is the goal for the body of Christ today to come together as one. Would you give us a call today at 954 552 3656? Representatives are standing by. This is the goal. Just remember the faithful global traveling network and the fire of the world. One well, welcome to another round of the Apostolic and Prophetic Roundtable. I am Apostle Thomas E. Douglas, your co-host of the Holy Temple Holiness Church of Deliverance, along with the founder of the Fivefold Global Traveling Network, Apostle Terry Ball. Tonight, we will continue with an open forum, forum rather, taking a look at the current times and season and listening for the prophetic voice that will guide and bring clarity in these confused complex and pressured times. We have some awesome guests on tonight and we're going to just turn it right over, amen, to our founder of the Fivefold Global Traveling Network, Apostle Terry Ball, and he will introduce our guests. I think he may have dropped off and I'm going to continue talking. Uh, so we have two awesome guests on tonight and when he comes back on, amen, he can do his introduction. We have Apostle Kevin Bailey, I believe all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana. And yes, we have sir. Brett Griffin. Greetings. All the way from Los Angeles, California. We're going to start with you, Dr. Brett Griff Griffin. Give us a little bit about yourself. Tell a little bit about your ministry, how you got started, and what the Lord is doing in your area, your Metron and uh, sphere of influence. Well, good evening, everyone, and blessings to you. It is truly, I, I want to say, an honor, uh, Apostle Douglas, to be here with you, Apostle uh, Terry Ball, and, and my brothers, Pastor Ron. Um, I've been, I'm actually from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the United States Air Force brought me to California close to 40 years ago. It wasn't long after being brought to California where uh, the Lord brought me back to the roots I had as a child, I'll say that. Um, the one daycare provider who was my mentor, she was actually my Elisha. And um, she taught me the fear of the Lord. I saw the power of God. Um, I had the pleasure of, of, of being acquainted with um, with uh, uh, Apostle, Apostle Bailey. And actually, Apostle Bailey, um, I was raised in deliverance from five years old. So the first time I even saw the power of God, overturning the power of darkness and dealing with deliverance. And that daycare yes. provider taught me that no one has more mm -hmm. power than God. So I learned that God was all powerful. Right. I learned that even as a child from three years old on to about nine years old, that only what you do for God will last. So in all of my endeavors, uh, I was in college at first to be a psychologist, and then I was going to be a lawyer. But after giving my life to Christ, he said, um, I need you to quit that because you're going to counsel my law. So read my Bible. And the Lord began to take me back to my roots after, give, after giving my life to him close to 40 years ago, actually. Um, and begin to, to, to reveal to me who I was. And, and show me that I was uh, long to the short ordained to be a mouthpiece for him and to counsel people with his word. I did five years of uh, youth pastoring, young prison ministry, outreach, uh, gang territory in Los Angeles, et cetera. Um, the Lord had me to do that until he consecrated me to reveal in me and through me what I studied through the scriptures. And he, because he began to reveal to me the kingdom and what the Lord revealed to me um, was that my kingdom is the only government that's eternal. And as a prophet and as a governmental prophet, whatever you cannot prove in your living is illegal with you as a mouthpiece. So the Lord consecrated me to be able to live what I had been studying and, and took me to another region, brought me back to, uh, returned me to California and began to connect me with, with leadership. This is a fruit of it in itself. Mm -hmm. Began to connect me with fivefold, primarily apostles and prophets in the rebuilding of the church for this hour. One of the things, if I may um, convey, is that, and one of the things that the Lord's been showing me in the past 20 years is that the church that we're looking at today 
as a church that was birthed in bondage. We're in a new age church where we don't know God. We don't respect God. We don't respect his righteousness, nor his holiness. And so when Jeremiah began to prophesy to the children of Israel in Jeremiah 25, he said, because of your idolatry, you are going into bondage and you're going to serve this king. But, but God said later, I know the plans that I have for you. And so God began to prophesy through Jeremiah to his people, I'm going to bring you out of that bondage and then I'm going to rebuild. And I believe that this platform, even in itself, the fact this is my first and full disclosure, this is my first invitation to a platform by a man of God where I am the only female on the platform. And the Lord is restoring the kingdom in the male and female expression of his apostolic and his movements. God is going to be moving through marriages. He's going to be restoring marriages. He's going to be revealing kingdom marriages because there's a work that needs to be done in the the earth. And so what the Lord has used me to do more so in the Southern California area was establish me with certain connections in ministry, but more so say, no, I'm going to the, the mantle and, and inheritance you received from your father, who was a Marine. And I learned community from my father at 10 years old. And the, and the work of the household was music industry. So a lot of where God uses me is in music and community and in business. I, I, I teach kingdom principles to build uh, entrepreneurs in this region, also work with uh, community giants that work with nonprofits of mentoring young women, um, those that help uh, build infrastructure with uh, digital marketing, et cetera. And so the Lord, and in this region, it's, I work with all, I work with Asians, I work with Mexican Americans, I work with Peruvians, I work with European Americans, I work with African Americans. And so in that, what the Lord is showing is the glory of the kingdom, really through all the sons of Noah and bringing things back together in a, in a unity and bringing me back to what I was raised in, in the Northeast and saying, help build the people, help build humanity so that they may see the love of Christ, see their need for a savior, and even under, understand coming to the purpose of their destiny. So the Lord uses me more in working with leaders to help those. I'm, I'm really called to those who are to affect the multitudes. God, I'm not one that God is really called to be on big platforms with a lot of people all the time. So every once in a while, he'll orchestrate even ha as he did through Apostle Terry Ball and say, I'd, I'd like you to be on this platform and just speak about many things. There are many things that God has revealed of what he wants to do in this last hour and through the church. And I'm watching it unfold. I'm watching God rebuild and restore by bringing his men of God forth like never before. God is restoring men as pillars of our society, of our community. And there's some hidden yes. giants and superheroes that we haven't even seen yet. And I believe that the Lord is bringing forth. I myself was raised with 17 brothers. I have one sister. And so my father in wow. the music business adopted, adopted 11 young men because they want, they were in the sixties, late sixties, they were a gang and a band. And so the profession of my household blessing. was music. So I grew up learning, learning men, learning the glory of God through the man. Why did you start with him? Why did you set the foundation in your male expression of who he was and then build and then take us, your idea out of his side, make a resemblance and then establish dominion. And I'm watching God restore that. I'm watching God restore that in his kingdom. And I believe even in that, that's why there's been such an attack from the kingdom of darkness against the identity of our young people, against the identity of individuals because the kingdom of God will come forth. It's time for the kingdom of God, and it's going to come forth with the glory that, that he's ordained. I, I get excited in talking about the Lord. Um, those that know me, I would doubt myself if I didn't have the fruit to speak for what God has called me to do. But there are many husbands and wives, uh, men, women, young people. I also mentor Z generation on a weekly basis. I meet with, with those of the Z generation and teaching them purpose and destiny and how to establish a personal relationship with the Lord um, that he may direct them in their lives. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, and you put me on the spot there, Apostle. 
Apostle <laughs> Douglas having me start first. <laughs> I thought I was going to go last, but amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, Together. look, you just heard from the special forces on the West Coast, <laughs> Los Angeles, California. <laughs> she have identified that we were born in bondage. But one of the things that I liked that you said was whatever you can't prove, your living is illegal. Yes, and sir. So when you when you mentioned that, that was valuable. We're not going to get in discussion yet. We're going to turn it over to Apostle Ball that he might introduce our next two guests, Apostle Kevin Bailey and Pastor Ron Hopper. Well, praise God. I want to say once again, welcome to everyone across America and, and abroad to the, to the roundtable discussion. As you know, we get into great discussions on these roundtables, kingdom discussions. And uh, I always say on every roundtable, listen, like King Arthur's round table, but this round table mm -hmm. is only completed by your chat and your conversation with our guests. So as our guests are speaking in the open forum, they're gonna speak as men and women of God. I want you all to chat, welcome to the chat line, welcome to the conversation line. This is social media, this is kingdom social media. Amen. Amen. And the anointing, I sense the Sata. I sense the spirit of God, Apostle Douglas, mm -hmm. already flowing as apostle. God, the break Griffin was speaking. I just felt such a presence of God is already with us. Man. Three, these, these two men of God, this woman of God, I know they've got something to share with us. So I want to just convey to our new listeners to chat with us, conversate with us, communicate with us. Amen. In the chat yeah. line. And what we do at the end of each podcast, we're going to read your uh your chats and your conversation as you in, in, interact with our guests tonight. And at the end of the podcast, we're going to talk with you about each person's ministry. Uh, we're going to promote their ministry, what God has given them to do. If they have books, whatever, we'll talk about that also. And we want you to get more introduced to them. This is our assignment is to network the network. So we want you to know more about what they are called to do in the kingdom of God. We have another guest apostle, Kevin Bailey, a powerful man of God, uh, <laughs> tremendous man of God, tremendous deliverance ministry. And, and Apostle Bailey, how many countries have you already been to? Uh, over 36. Wow. Places, wow. countries, cities, yeah. Boy, your yes, passport book is 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 decorated with stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Tell us, tell us about your ministry as we as we, before we get into the word tonight, Apostle Bailey. All right, yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I will say that. Well, I just have a heart for that next generation and those youth. Uh, it was a place that. I very well could have ended up, and mainly with the prison ministry, the Lord started dealing with my heart about raising prayer palaces and targeting uh, the youth in various parts of the world, uh, some of them being orphans without a father. Our father uh, wasn't around. My father was not around. And so uh, sometimes we don't understand and growing up what's uh, going on with us, uh, myself, from um, being involved in uh, the streets, uh, you know, run, running, the, running the streets, drugs, violence. Uh, I had a heart. I developed a heart for the people once God started to deal with me um, Thank you, Father. about that prison with those youth and the adult, uh, because it was a place that that I could have very well ended up if I had to continue down the path that uh, I was on. Uh, now, uh, over 23 years ago, um, and to deal with those that had made a confession, uh, he was telling me that many that uh, they say they believe me, but they don't believe in me. And I want you to address this uh, issue because many are uh, connected with me by confession. Uh, and what I found out is that confession only, not never living anything or uh, just even going to church. Um, and what I told the Lord is that I wasn't going to do anything that was traditional. Um, uh, and that uh, now when he was speaking to me, it was very big because I never thought that, uh, we would, uh, impact the way we are with erecting, uh, prayer palaces. I believe that, uh, everything starts with prayer and intercession in, in every region, although I'm in Indianapolis, and dealing with the real issues that's uh, within the city. Uh, I remember us going into, that's just a little bit about me, but our ministry is in within 22 different nations 
uh, within the world. Our ministry is, and there's hundreds of intercessors that over time I've raised up by the grace of God uh, to um, do deliverance, healing ministry, prophecy, and many aspects of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Uh, so I thank God for that. Uh, but I did want to be traditional, and I believe that it all starts with prayer. Uh, some think all we do is deliverance ministry, but we do a lot of the community. I remember us going into the community where we was at. It was a very bad area, uh, and I'm like, God, you got to be kidding me, you know. Uh, we get the, uh, the guy meets us there. <laughs> I'm like, the windows is out. This place, the carpet. He comes back months later. We like, you know, he said, like, you get the place, just give me, um, I think it was $100 at the time, <clears throat> $75, because we was in a house at first, uh, but I knew what God had given to me, uh, and it was to reach those uh, young men and just reach those men, well, and women both, uh, with uh, uh, the gospel, not only the gospel, uh, but with the deliverance and healing ministry. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to impact, to, to, to train them up also, teach them how to be a member within a team, uh, but also be ready to be deployed because uh, we uh, trained enough uh, a team, um, an army is what we would do that we can deploy into different parts of the world. Uh, so I thank God uh, for that. Um, Preaching, and we, we love preaching and teaching. I love preaching and teaching, but uh, the greatest miracle, of course, is salvation. Uh, this area, though, was very bad. Uh, they were saying, how are we going to survive here? Um, they were prostituting, uh, but I remember them, uh, a very bad area. I remember them telling us that no pastor comes here at 10 p.m. for prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy was telling me, we ain't putting the mailbox up when I went into the area uh, because they just keep ripping the mailbox off. We said, put one on there, they won't rip ours off. So we started prayer at 10 P to 6 A. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember a guy approaching us cause we were going to, we would do prayer from 10 to 1230 or one o'clock or so. And then go into these uh, uh, projects that was not far from the church. And he was saying, hey, don't no pastor come out here at night don't no pastor come to their church to pray. I said, I'm not a pastor. I'm an apostle. Those are the pastors. We're all together. And we have pastors, teachers, and evangelists here. It, it, so what, what's the problem? Well, I, we're coming here to pray tonight. So uh, even when they got him, he was telling us if he catches us in the apartments, he's going to shoot us. We kept going in there. And it was souls that was connected to our church to come out of there. Sometimes finding them with a syringe in their arm, dead, having to call the police, things of that nature. So God always uh, knows what he is doing. And I'm just really blessed uh, that uh, we, we was there for uh, quite some time, but I was really blessed to say, God, you are actually used me uh, to, to bring to these people the truth and the gospel. And it's the very place I was. They're prostituting, they're selling drugs, they're gambling. This was uh, on a, in a field across from us until we complained to the city and said, mm -hmm. take this field down so that they could see the church, so that they could see the ministry. Take all these weeds down. Uh, fighting, prostituting in front of the church. All of it stopped when we started that prayer at 10 p.m., to 6 a.m. Yes, it all stopped. Wow. wow that's yeah, wild. so that's just a little bit about me. Uh, we do prison ministry to the youth and adult as well, as I said. Uh, we did a lot of outreach to the homeless. We went to the homeless camps, uh, brought a lot of them to the ministry at the time. Some of the people, because of course they live outside, had a problem with that. They attacked me over it, but we were bringing them uh, to the ministry and taking them through deliverance. Many of them need healing in their body. They needed deliverance. They were on uh, drugs, various things that was going on with them. And the Lord would send me to go fish. It said, now you got them here, got them. It's deliverance time. Let's mm -hmm. get this done. Let's get it done and let's do it worldwide. Amen. Amen. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful. And that's Amen. Apostle Calvin Bailey. Amen. From Indianapolis, Indiana. You know, Apostle Douglas, 
one of the amazing things I love about these roundtables and, you know, the Book of Philemon talks about, but about communicating our faith. As we communicate our faith one with another, as you meet different people, you hear different things coming out of the kingdom. Yes. And the man of God <laughs> said something tonight that I've never heard before. He said, prayer palaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> prayer, that, that, I love that, prayer palaces. Yes, sir. Let's introduce yes, our sir. final guest tonight, but not finally in the kingdom, a tremendous, a tremendous man of God, apostle, pastor, evangelist, Ron Hopper. Been knowing him a long time, but he's a man of the spirit. He's a man of the community. He's a man, a family man. He's a tremendous man of God. I say this not lightly because he's a part of our network, but he is a Jew to the body of Christ himself and his wife. They work very hard. In the you know, Apostle Douglas, it's hard to find true pastors today. Yes, sir. They really have a heart for the people and a heart for yes. the people. Now, I want to okay. salute Pastor Ron Harper before we go any further today. I want to salute him and honor him yes. being a pastor. Thank a, God for the uh, pastors. Yes. He's, he's called to be an apostle, but he does the work of a pastor in such a tremendous way. Pastor Ron Harper, tell us about your ministry, people that don't know who you are, sir. Well, praise God. You know, I, I actually feel like uh, Paul, you know, when Paul said, I'm, I feel like the least of these, you know, I'm one of such great, great individuals, man, but I, I, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored uh, to be a part of such a, uh, such a forum. You know, my, a little bit of my background, um, I, I actually uh, been, was in Church of God in Christ. I mean, if you may know Kojic, I was part of Kojic for about 26 years um, oh. off there, uh, came in off the streets and, um, you know, and, and for about 26 years. And now I've been uh, independent going into, you know, over two years now. God had pulled us out of, uh, of, uh, of Kojic. Uh, but one thing God has God wow. shared with me, you know, one of the, you know, the ministry that God has given me. You know, he said, we have, we have a solid foundation. The foundation is good. But one thing he's taught me, he said, you don't build with the foundation. You build on the foundation. And I think what, what we've seen in, in many years, right. we're constantly trying to build with something that where we started. And you never see anyone pouring concrete uh, to build the side of the wall or pouring con concrete to build the roof. You know, That's we good. use different materials. We, need, we use different methods uh, because good. we have a solid foundation. Amen. And so God has given me that kind of, uh, wisdom and understanding uh, of the kingdom of God. He is, he is definitely moving us uh, into the apostolic uh, reformation and, and uh, we're excited about it, but we're, you know, God is, he, he, I shared it with Apostle Ball a while back. You know, I, I knew he's been calling us here, but he says, son, don't worry about the title. Just do the work. Amen. Just, just do the work. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that's what we do. We just, we just try to do the work. Uh, my background is, is a little bit, uh, a little bit of both of uh Apostle uh, Griffin and uh, Bailey's, you know, I uh, do a lot of outreach ministry. Uh, my, my passion is the youth. Uh, we go into yes. the jails. Uh, we do a lot of uh, things on the streets with uh, uh, resources. We, we just connect resources together. Um, it's a blessing. With the youth, just, just so many things. I don't want to get into all of them uh, tonight, but uh, I'm just, I'm grateful, uh, you know, that God is allowing our ministry. Uh, my, my church is in the city of Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, it is called I Am Kingdom Ministries uh, International, and uh, we're 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 blessed to be a part of this forum. Uh, I am part of the uh, uh, fivefold global traveling network as well, uh, with Apostle mm -hmm. Douglas and Apostle Terry. And um, again, I'm I'm just excited to go forward, just to hear what the Lord has to say tonight. Amen. So God bless you. Back into your hands, Apostle Terry. Back uh -huh. into your hands, Apostle Douglas, as our great moderator. Wow, what we have here today is a great community-oriented, community-minded team. But what I want to start off with, since you guys been nailing this thing in your introduction, I want to start off with uh, uh, the prophetic times and season, uh, understanding what God is saying at this particular time. Because most of the time, we operate on the, on the chronos. You know, we go through our daily activities, just doing whatever we're doing. But I, leave, I believe that chronos is good because it allows us to invest our time to mature and to grow. But I believe yes. that mm -hmm. this season has a kairos moment. I'm bringing this question to you, Dr. Brett Griffin. There is a certain season and a time that God is getting ready to do something mighty in the regions of our influence. I want to know your thoughts on that. Hi. <laughs> um, yes, sir. We are in a 
what um, is harvest season and God's timetable and God's calendar, we are in harvest season. And what the Lord was saying to me last year, okay, and the harvest season always lasts until his new year, which this year is September 15th. Okay. So the Kairos we're in now prophetically is almost parallel to when Jesus came to the Jordan, because when G before Jesus came to the Jordan, John the Baptist was preaching to God's people to repent. He was, he was preaching to the ones that had the scripture, the ones that were going to temple, the ones that were going to synagogue, but they didn't understand the kingdom. So the kingdom wasn't brought forth in understanding until yes. Jesus came not the kingdom of heaven. And the Jews always thought that the kingdom was just for them. So they were always looking for the Messiah to establish the kingdom and reestablish them as an ethnos, as a, as a, as a nation. When Jesus was bringing the kingdom, this is where we are now. We've gone through religion. We've gone through the evangelism. We've gone through great giants that have gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, evangelist Billy Graham, uh, Apostle uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, Apostle Frederick Casey Price, teaching ministry. We've gone to where the, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers have gone on to be with the Lord. And the Lord is establishing, reestablishing a new apostolic foundation. This, sir, oh, you want me to stop? No, I, I'm just witnessing with you. Oh, okay. To start all over again. And this mm -hmm. is why the outreach. So mm -hmm. God is saying, I need the Amen. same thing again because I need to reestablish the evangelists, reestablish the pastors, position the teachers, and now make disciples. And so I can set up these prayer palaces. So I can set up this global uh, introduction of the church to the kingdom. Because mm -hmm. when Jesus came to the Jordan, he was introducing the Jews to the kingdom, but there was no church establishment yet. So now we've graduated through time and the Lord is saying, now I need the church to understand that my son coming is not just about you. It's about my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you are to be the expression of my authority in the earth. You are to function right. in the earth the same way that my son did. You are to cast out devils. You are to, if, if I may speak something prophetically that the Lord was saying while the gentlemen were speaking, apostle, he, the Lord said, when you gentlemen were talking, he said, these are my fathers. When you men were talking. Wow. Yes. Pastor Ron, he said, these are my fathers based on what Apostle Paul said. He said, though you have had many instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. And before there is a manifestation of kingdom, there has to be a reestablishment of fathers. So the Lord will take his, his sons right. that are pastors, that are evangelists and say, come here, daughter, come here, son, let me help you. Let me help you first with understanding your purpose and salvation. And so in that, God is reestablishing prophetically fathers so that he can begin to move evangelistically and begin to, to reestablish things so that the apostles can be moved to take territory. So this year, the Lord said this to me, Apostle Douglas, he said, this harvest season is about my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so whatever everyone, whatever those that are leaders that have invested into my kingdom, they will receive a harvest likewise. Wow. But what I'm also doing in this Cairo season is Jesus said this to his disciples and apostles in John chapter four, around verse 38. He said, I sent you to reap a harvest where you bestowed no labor. I have not labored with you, any of you gentlemen. Mm -hmm. But yet in this, we are gathering a harvest together for the kingdom, even in this sitting. So yes. this Kairos, the Lord is reconnecting fivefold and apostolic ministry and say, I need you to gather my kingdom harvest. I That's need right. to reposition my fathers. I need to reposition my, my men and reestablish structure and pillars and bring forth the whole body as one so that we can establish the kingdom of God. So that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's yes, a sir. dynamic and mm -hmm. awesome. Apostle Kevin, Kevin Bailey, I'm going to come to you next and I'm going to piggyback off of uh, her comments, uh, I believe that uh, it's the right time and place to receive God's favor, breakthrough, refreshing, and revival. But yes. what she was saying 
it's really a time for us to wake out of our sleep for God is calling us to awake. Yes. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think that when we get into the modality that she was talking about, heaven and earth will converge and we will see these mighty move and miracles upon the face of the earth. Your thoughts on that, Apostle Kevin? B. Well, I, I believe this is this is very significant. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brett, for sharing this. Uh, this is very powerful. And thank you, Apostle Thomas, uh, for bringing me in on this. Uh, the real problem is, I think that we have ran into today, is that many understand church, and uh, but they don't understand the kingdom. And because it's ruled by a king and many pastors, you, you know, uh, that are even by their self or have a, a team or uh, or even all the offices not there. They really are an apostle. But that that gift, uh, when we talk about the apostleship, in most cases, is looked down on. It's only pastor and evangelist. And we have our pastors leaving uh, the, the church at an all time high. Uh, it's what we have some of our pastors because they need the help. Uh, probably Pastor Ron has survived uh, because he operates, he's embraced the apostolic and the prophetic. The pastors that do not, that, you know, not just impacting uh, the community, but the pastors and shepherds, I'm not talking about them, but Dr. Brett, you started it about the apostolic and fivefold. And when you even talk about uh, casting out demons, you know, this is kingdom ministry. We serve a king, it's Jesus. We must operate and embrace his kingdom. You listen, John said, hey, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is what John said, repent. So I believe, uh, even with Dr. Britt is saying prophetically, it's it's a harvest of souls that are waiting. Not not listen. You can't do deliverance or healing ministry if you don't save souls. We have to get back to evangelism. The problem is we're not winning souls. All right, you ain't gonna do no deliverance or even prophesy or do healing if you're not saving souls. Hallelujah. This is the kingdom. It's a kingdom. It's not a denomination that they come into. It's actually an army. Because he said, endure hardship in 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4 as a soldier. Yes, sir. As a soldier of Jesus Christ. So guess what? You must take directive orders from the chief and commander who is, who is Jesus. You must take commands from him, directive orders from him in this army. So I believe prophetically, we have to get busy. And after this harvest, because uh, uh, the Bible says that the harvest is right, but the labors are few. So some have not focused on evangelism. They focus on uh, three hymnals, uh, a good word, shout, run around, and nobody is getting saved. And we have to be careful with the apostolic and the prophetic. We, we have some are moving that into a uh, what we call a, um, an empire, but it's a movement and it's connected around the kingdom. And you have to save souls. A part of it is saving souls. That's why we need we need that pastor to, to hear all the hurts and pains. Uh, this is what we do. And, and, and we need the when they come in, we give them to the teacher. You got to get them grounded. Amen. In the word, we give them to the teacher, teach them the word. Now we're going to give them to um, the pastor. Let them hear all their hurts and pains. They're going to say, well, you better go to Apostle for deliverance. Well, we have a delivery seat. <laughs> Once they hear everything, they're going to say, you need to go to Apostle. Well, hold on. We're going to prophesy over you. We're on a prophetic team, so we need all the gifts. But listen, listen, you. if you prophesy over them, they bound. What, what can they do? What can they do with what you prophesy? <laughs> and sometimes the devil might act up. Glory. So it's, oh, it's so winning time in the kingdom. So I believe, yeah, the harvest is right. We need labors. It's so winning time. Listen, yes, the greatest miracle, no matter how much deliverance, how much prophecy, how, how, much, how many people get healed. Listen, if you ain't winning souls or doing evangelism, on, then who you, what, what ministry, who you going to minister to? If you won't go into that street to get that homeless, yeah, I know they smell bad. We used to have them in our church. 
Ever. So what? You, you know what? We're going to prophesy over them. We're going to get them delivered. And we're going to go pick them up every week and bring them over here. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do? Listen, I'll just share this and I'm going to give it back to you, Apostle Thomas. The prison where I go was ready to let, I said, hey, I can get a place to donate shirts and pants. Don't bring them in the orange. They said, Apostle, are you serious? You'll bring them? Yes. Bring yeah. them over there and don't handcuff them. The Holy Ghost will arrest them. They've already been arrested anyway. Bring them over to our ministry when we was at our ministry. Let me minister to all of them. Amen. <laughs> That's what we got to do, Apostle Thomas. So, yes, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Two statements of Apostle Pastor Ron Harper. We know this is right down your alley. <laughs> I just want to make two statements. Apostle Terry Ball has always told us that God has changed the church address. It's no longer within the four walls. We Amen. Got to go to the doorstep, the front doors of the yes, community sir. that yes, we're created to serve. And membership in this season, in this Kairos moment, won't look like what you think it should. It's because God is moving, amen, differently. Pastor Ron Harper is a great evangelist in this area. My, my, my. Hallelujah. He did, he did all Mr. the things that you talked Glory. about, and we're just going to release him to have his way. <laughs> Glory. Listen, there, there's, so much, there's so much uh, to attach, but I, I want to attach to what Apostle Bailey just, just spoke about concerning the harvest. We have, when we understand the kingdom, there is always harvest in the kingdom. There is always yes. harvest in the kingdom. We have to understand that. That's uh, right. Amen. The scripture that you quoted, the, the, it goes on and it tells us, it says that, say not that you that you need four more months. Yes, he sir. said, look at the field. Yes, now, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Come on now. So that Come means on you now. got to yes. look past the church, look past religion, look past tradition, and see yes. the heart of God. And when you Amen. have the heart of God, you'll see souls that needs to be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you'll see that. You'll see the soul that needs to be saved. So what you said, I, I want to kind of piggyback on it because Psalms 90, I think it's Psalms 90, verse, verse 12, where Moses, Moses got a, got a revelation here. Moses says, so teach us to number our days. Yes. He says, oh, to number our days that we may gain the heart of wisdom. So mm -hmm. what Moses was saying is, he said, teach us. He, he got this epitome. He said, he understood now that man had had lost its humanity he had lost the righteousness of god and we because we got so caught up in in the world system what uh -oh. he was saying is teach us now to number our days to see our mm. lives as you see it okay mm. to begin to see our lives as you see it so when we're able to number our days now moses begin to understand he said when we're dealing with the kingdom the bible says that in the kingdom one chases a thousand right two puts what ten oh, thousand Come so on. We understand there's, there's multiplication, on. there's acceleration in the kingdom of God. So mm -hmm. God is telling us to slow it down. Say, listen, understand what is being spoken in the, in the realm of the spirit. He says, so teach us. That means to, that, that we have to, wisdom is learned. We have to be taught. I think, I think Apostle Griffith talked about that. We have to begin to learn and to teach and to sit down and begin to uh, uh, understand that God is speaking. God is God is speaking. And I'm, the reason I'm so grateful because what, what I'm hearing on this line is that when God gives you a revelation on something, then all of a sudden now you hear it being spoken yes. in, in other places and other regions. We're all from different parts, uh, uh, from, the, from the West Coast, from the North, and down here from the South. And we're still hearing God speaking in this region. And he said that it's, it's time for kingdom. And this is why God rescued me. I, I'm going to say that. Uh, 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 very easy to say that he rescued me and he plucked me out of a place of religion. He plucked me from a place and he says, wow. son, I can allow you to get stuck here. You've learned, you've got your foundation. He said, now I need you to understand. As Moses began to speak this, he said, I want you to begin to know the time, the, the sons of Issachar. That's good. When we look at yes. the sons of Issachar, the Bible, when mm -hmm. we look at the structure of the children of Israel, when they were in the desert, and we always talk about send Judah first. This is the church. When you look at the Judah, it's when you look at the church mentality, okay, that mm. is the church mentality. Send Judah first. All we want to do is praise God. All we want to do is dance and shout. All we want to uh -oh, do is come on now. 
Okay, that's that's the church mentality. But when you're dealing with the kingdom, you understand that the praise and no one moved until the sons of Issachar gave them the okay to move. Yes, because sir. the sons of Issachar understood they had a they had they understood the mind of God. They understood that when the seasons were changing, they understood that they didn't move until God gave them direction. So it wasn't just about giving praise. So when you look at the structure, you had the sons of Issachar, then you had Judah, and then you had uh, uh, sons of uh, uh, Jerubbabel, I think it was. They they mm -hmm. they took care of the resources. So nothing moved until the okay came from the sons of Issachar. When God mm -hmm. gets the okay, so they understood the clouds didn't move by day, and neither did the uh, did, neither did the light move by night until God gave them the authorization. Once they got the authorization, then you praise God. Okay, then Judah went. Then Judah went. Okay, mm -hmm. now it's time to move forward. But what mm -hmm. the church has been doing, we've been jumping and shouting, and God is not even, their, Sir. their God is not connected uh -oh. Uh -oh. to what we're doing. But we're jumping and shouting. We're having a great mm -hmm. time, but God is nowhere in the midst. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the sons of Issachar has said, no, it's not time mm -hmm. to move. We're moving in mm -hmm. the wrong direction. But the mm -hmm. church has, so God is, we're in a very pivotal time. Amen. We're in a very pivotal time now, amen, in these last days. And God is saying in Revelation, if you, if you notice what happened in the book of Revelation when the, to the uh, seven churches of Asia Minor, each one of those churches had a different identity. Some mm -hmm. had love, right? Some was brotherly love. But there was one message that God gave each one of those churches, and they were all the same. And this is what we're doing here tonight. Each one of them ended with, he that has an ear, let him hear what the yes. Spirit is staying unto the church. Yes. I don't care how you had church before COVID. I don't care how you what your church was made up before God. COVID. When God when God began to shift, He said, "He that has an ear." What we did, we didn't stop to listen what God was saying in this yeah, season. Come on. I, mm -hmm. I heard Apostle Paul say this. There was a judgment of God. If you notice something, nobody cast out COVID. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Nobody cast out COVID. Amen. I don't care how much you prayed and you fasted. Because it was a judgment <laughs> of God, amen, to the world to get us to stop and to hear what he was saying, amen, to the believers. Nobody, yes, yeah, some of us caught it and we were healed from it, but no one cast it out until God set it and let it and set it loose and tied it up. Amen. We had to go through the process. But in the midst of going through the process, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the church. What we were doing is trying to hurry up and have church as usual. God says, no, that's not the format. That is not the format. I'm trying to get you to see what I'm doing in this season. and it It'll never be the same. Amen. So when we look yeah. at it, we're, we're dealing with the urgency of now. And we're going to talk yeah. about it. We have to understand and see the urgency of now. What is it that yeah. God is doing now to prepare us for the next? I'm, I'm relieving myself. Apostle Thomas. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Listen, the sons of Issachar understood the now time of God. Dr. Brett Griffin, I, I while Apostle Ron was speaking, I, I, I came up with a scripture, and I'm going to go to Romans 13 and 11, a, a part of that, and I want you to respond. And it says this, and do this knowing the time, the kairos, the time, that is now high time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. It is high time. In other words, it is now the set time mm -hmm. to move in the giftings, the fivefold mm -hmm. of yes. God, amen, to bring deliverance to the amen. kingdom. Your thoughts on that, Dr. Brett Griffin? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that, my thoughts, when Paul, that when Paul said this, there was a, that the first thing was that there, what God is doing is restoring a sense of urgency to the church. Because when Paul wrote it and everything he wrote, he wrote with a sense of urgency for the church to be ready for the coming, for the, for the second coming of Christ, for him to return. And in this, and I always look at in studying the scripture, who he, who is he speaking to? And what's interesting in that you, in quoting this scripture, is the culture of America is as was the culture of Rome. 
And so in that, there was there was the focus, uh, 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 Apostle uh, Bailey and I were talking about it earlier, there was a focus of image, there was a focus of power, there was a focus of position, there was all these focuses that were going on, and God is saying, look, what is what I am showing you, even as a uh, Pastor Ron, Apostle Ron was speaking, as all the things you trusted in are beginning to fail, and I'm allowing them to fail to wake you up. And every time God, every time God had to awaken his people, it was either with a famine, it was either with pestilence, or it, it was either with war. And this is a position that America has been in because it started really in 2001, which was a threat of war, of the sword. And then it came, it was supposed to be economic, whatever, whatever, in 2008, and then come, came COVID. And so that scripture that you read is prophesying to us to say, what else is there to do? This is temporary. It is time to wake up out of sleep and prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. But before that time, before that coming comes, there is an alignment that we have to get in. But we can't get in that if we're missing the Kairos moment. The Lord showed me this image some time ago. I don't remember what it was, when it was. But he said, when the time comes that I visit the church, he said, there's gonna be three groups of people. And he showed me an image of people who were just, as we call lollygagging, uh, you know, as we used to say, lollygagging and out doing whatever and needed to be home packing, but were not. And then there were those that said, I know there's coming a return for me, but I'm gonna pack a little bit, but getting distracted every once in a while. So I'll pack a suit or I'll pack this, but I'll I'll intend to pack these shoes, but I'm only gonna put one pair in, get a little toiletries and put them in the bag. And then there are those who says, I'm keeping myself ready. I'm keeping myself awake. I'm keeping myself sober. So I'm gonna pack everything and just wait for the sound of the trumpet. And what is happening in, in this awakening is the sound of the trumpet is beginning to sound because God is bringing and has brought a famine of the words of the Lord. There's not many people speaking the words of the Lord. And so what is happening is there are, there are those things that are going to cause people to either have to try to run and pack right away, grab a half pack suitcase, or say, I've been waiting for this and grab their whole bag and say, let's go, where are we going? And so God is distinguishing in this hour, those three, because God does not give you, God may give you a word, but you have a season to become in agreement with what, in obedience to what he said. Because once that season is gone, no different than the children of Israel who had, who tempted God 10 times in the first generation. And God said, you're not going. I've given you time after time after time, and you missed the season mm -hmm. to come into obedience and alignment with what I said. And so what God is, is, is doing, there is an awakening coming to everybody, but you have people with different, uh, uh, that are at different readiness levels yes. because the awakening mm -hmm. is here and is coming, but you have us that are at different awakening levels. So you're going to have to have some that are going to have to rush and do the first works all over again. Somebody was talking about the churches of Asia. Then you're going to have those that, that says, I lost a lot and missed a lot because I got away from my first love. And then you have those that just got the, 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 the doctrine of the Nicolaitans or allowed Jezebel to have her way etc. And so now it's, you got to get your butt whooped and then, okay, if you really want to make it and wake up, then you can go. And so that's, that's my, when I hear that, I, I, I hear all of that. And then so, but I hear all of that, sir. Yeah. And, and I want to summarize because we're getting ready to take a station break and turn it over to the founder of the Fivefold Global Network. But I just want to summarize what you just said with one scripture. Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the first to the sixth verse. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For mm -hmm. when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor yes. upon a pregnant woman, woman, 
and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so mm -hmm. that this day should not overtake you as a thief. Yes. We are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. We're going to turn it over to the founder of the Fivefold Global Travel Network by the way of Apostle Terry Ball, that he might interject and have his comments. Glory to God. Glory to God. Apostle, the fire is falling tonight. Yes, yes. The fire is falling through these men and women of God. I just sense such the presence of God on this word tonight. And if you're listening, go ahead and share the podcast with those you know they can share it with others because this needs to be heard and reheard and reheard and reheard again as they're speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. I've heard so many things that God is, that the men and women of God have said tonight that have just confirmed with my spirit. And I love what Apostle Ron said that it's a wonderful that when you hear Revelation, the Apostle uh, Dr. Brett Griffin is in the California, Palmdale, California. We met one another at a great conference in Delaware. Uh, we're networking now. We're, we're, we're going to be working together. I met Apostle Kevin Bailey, amen, a tremendous man of God. And Apostle Bailey, I forgot to mention to you that I know Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Oh, okay. That's my brother. friend. Yeah. Yes, sir. A tremendous man of God. And it, yeah. it, it, see, what's happening is I said this at the Delaware conference that, that we're in the time of the end gathering. Amen. And that there's a Holy Ghost net, yeah, the whole side. There's a yes. Holy Ghost net that has been cast, you know, the Jews at what Passover, Pentecost. And tabernacles. We're in the tabernacle in season of the Lord where there is a net being spiritually cast or cast oh, yeah. over the body of Christ. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's in gathering, it's bringing us together supernaturally by the Spirit mm -hmm. of the Lord. You have to be very sensitive mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit this time. Ron spoke about two years ago, his life shifted. He, he, was, he was in gathered to something different now. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and there's an in gathering in this in this season. Now, I want to read a verse of scripture that. I've been Holy Ghost has had me on for quite some time. As First Chronicles chapter twelve, and verse one, it says, "And these are they that came to David at Ziglag. These mm -hmm. are they that came to David at Ziglag. Who came to David at Ziglag was the army, the army of the mm -hmm. Lord that God had his and God just started gathering people to surround the David. And there's and that that's what I see the Lord doing with with these podcasts, with these different events that's going on." And the word zigzag means two things. It means to, to press or to pour. Now, yes. let's get a revelation on that. To press or to pour. Many of us are at zigzag. And mm -hmm. zigzag, you're either at a place of pressure or you're at a place of experiencing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. many of you that have been faithful at the things of God, this is your season of experiencing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It of a whole Sata. And some of you that are at the place of pressure, you need to keep pressing into the realm of the spirit of God that you can experience what God has for you in this season. Many of you that, that, that are true in your heart to God, like David was true in his heart to God. So God took him through the pressure of Saul, but then he delivered him to the place where he, God began to formulate his own vision, his own army, his own blueprint. And A, in their heavenly blueprints that are coming down from heaven for God's generals in this season, there's an ordering of things. There's a new ordering of things. There's a new uh, heavenly blueprint that's coming down for many ministries today. Uh, you know, a lot of this that I talk about in my book is coming out, the end time army of the Lord. And, and when I see Apostle Bailey, I see Apostle Brett and, and so many other Apostle Ron, so many others that I've met, I see the army coming together. David, Apostle Douglas was amazing. At one point, he's running for his life. Then overnight, he's anointed king. And next thing you know, next thing happens to him now, God supernaturally break not just a regular army to in gather with him. Hear what I'm saying by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Not just a regular church member came to David, but men that were mighty in battle, excellent in war. And, and, and many of you that have these ministries, God is saying to you, I'm sending you an army. I'm sending you, I'm in gathering to your, your assignments, yes. mighty yes. men and mighty women of God that are that are fit for Amen. battle. Special forces is coming to support your ministry. And the last thing I want to say that these are these are the times of, as a prophet of the Lord. I want you to understand these are the times of the judgment of the Lord is upon us. Yes, yes, sir. The judgment of the Lord is upon us. Hear me to hear me mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. I want to read to you uh first chronicles chapter Kings, verse King Kings chapter 18 and mm -hmm. verse 36. And it came to pass 
at the time of the evening sacrifice. That's where we are in, in our in our time zone, the Apostle Dex, we were talking about Kronos and Kairos time. We're at the time of the evening sacrifice. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're at the time of, uh, in, in the time, it, reckon, they reckon, it represented a time of the judgment of the Lord. It was going to happen one way or the other. Are the false or the real prophets? And that's where we find ourselves today in the body of Christ, in the, in the world as we know it. The judgment of the Lord are upon us. Glory to God. So welcome, and I want to say to everyone that's out there on chat, making, we have a tremendous chat line tonight. Make your comments. If you're new on the round table, we want you to make your comments because you complete the chat. You complete the conversation. We're going to read as many of your conversational chats as we can before we close out tonight. We're going to also introduce you to these tremendous ministries. We want you to network with them. Many of you that I see online, I want you to network with Pastor Ron, uh, Dr. Britt, Apostle Bailey. We're going to network your ministries together, make some new connections because that's our assignment as a network is to network. Amen. The networks. And so these are tremendous. When we bring people on here, amen, they, are, they, they believe me, they are Holy Ghost filled and ready to go. Yes. Amen. And so and I want you, want you to really receive their ministries in the Lord Jesus Christ. As amen. Forward. Apostle, back into your hands at this time, sir. Coming to you, Apostle Keith Bailey. Uh, we are to awaken, anticipate, and advance. And so I believe God wanted that, want us to awaken to our identity in Zion because that's the place where the spirit of God dwells. And when we take mm -hmm. on that identity, the identity of Zion, which represents the place that God has chosen to dwell. Mm -hmm. I believe in this season, God has identified, amen, the places where he dwells. There's some places God dwells and there's some places that have Ichabod over the door, mm -hmm. over the door. I want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, the, the days of this is, this is a uh, good, thank you, Apostle Thomas, but David said this, um, in the book of first Chronicles chapter, uh, 15, David said, I built houses for himself in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, no one may carry the ark of God, but the Levites for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. All right. So in other words, the, the presence of God, uh, can, it, it can't be uh, done through entertainment, emotionalism, and many a times hypocrisy. The Bible says that David built houses where the Ark of Covenant was a place for God. Then he pitched a tent there where the presence of God was. It's, it's what the word of God said. So the days of, hey, it's okay to run, jump, and shout, and amen. But listen, the time of emotionalism, the time of entertainment, or, or even them saying, hey, God is here, or I feel this anointing. I feel this. He's here. Listen, listen, a pattern was given to Moses. Over there in the book of Exodus. Yes, it was. Up on the tabernacle. There was a pattern given. And if all of the instruments and all of the things that he said was not in the temple, did he come? He didn't come until everything. Uh, look at a positive. <laughs> so sometimes we say that God is there, but there is a pattern that there is a pattern that has to be in place. And this pattern is connected to team. This pattern is connected to networking. Why are you uh, a tripping? Because this person is uh, doing this for God and doing this. The Bible says in First Chronicles 12 and seven that there are many ministries, but a different diversities, but for the profit of all. Yes. And First Corinthians 12, 7 and 8, go look at. So, so the reality is that why does it matter? So that competition demon needs to be exposed tonight because we're not competing with anybody. It's about advancing the kingdom. And, and, and so what they don't do, what you do, but it's the pattern. Is the Ark of Covenant there? Is the pattern there? They'll say, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me, I feel the Holy but the reality is that it's an act. Yes. It's hypocrisy, which is play acting. 
pretending. Mm. Those days are over. Those who remain in that place, hey, the me. ministries will become obsolete. Because yeah. listen, the world is mocking us right now because they see the disunity. Uh, they see the competition, the pride, the greed. I could go on and on. Listen, we must embrace because the ark of God is the presence of God. It is time for the presence of God. In, in all of our houses, no matter what houses we're in, all over the world, it's time for the presence of God. Amen? Amen. It's time for us to embrace it. The presence of God. No more emotionalism or uh, faking it till we make it, going through the motions. And listen, if you don't have the grace, get somebody up there who, who got it. And let's let's do something. And, and that's why a team is needed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, that sir. will operate and embrace and receive this kingdom that we are in, Apostle Thomas. Yes, Let sir. me give it to you. <laughs> listen, man, a guy, you fine. <laughs> listen, don't pay me no mind because I respond. I, I, I used to wave my hand, but I didn't want you to stop because Dr. Brett. <laughs> <laughs> when I my hand. So I just start laughing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I know that you're on point. Pastor Ron Harper, I'm coming to you, man of God. Yes. Psalm 27 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Uh, mm -hmm. in the sacred place of his mm -hmm. tabernacle, he shall hide me. He yes. shall set me high upon a rock. And now mm -hmm. my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all it's around. Powerful. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. will I offer sacrifices mm -hmm. of joy in his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. other words, uh, Pastor Kevin Bailey said, all the pieces have to be in place in the pavilion mm -hmm. and for these things to manifest. Your a pattern. Pastor Ron Hallelujah. Ron. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when, when you deal with Psalm 27, I have, I have to connect that to Psalms 91. I have to connect that to Psalms mm -hmm. 91 because Psalms 91 tells us, it says that he that dwelleth in the um, secret place of the yes. most high, right? He that dwells, so that means he that possesses that atmosphere, he that lives there, who, he mm -hmm. that looks to please God, that's a place of resident, okay? It's not a place that I visit on Sundays. You say he that dwelleth in that place, then, it, mm -hmm. then watch how it picks it up. It says, shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. So that means that when you're that close, where, wherever God moves, his shadow moves. And when the shadow moves, because I'm abiding under the shadows of the almighty, right? Then I'm moving along with the shadow. So wherever God moves, I'm moving along with him. E Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 15, it, it tells mm -hmm. us that see then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, right? Mm -hmm. But as wise, redeeming and mm -hmm. understanding the times, amen, mm -hmm. because we are mm -hmm. in the last and we're in some evil days. Mm -hmm. Understanding yes. that mm -hmm. I have to position or reposition myself so that I can understand the principles and the movement of God. Colossians 4 and 5 also picks it up. Colossians 4 and 5 says that walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time, understanding the season, okay? Mm -hmm. Understanding that now God has called me to a place now to dwell in his kingdom. What, what does that mean? So we, we pick that up with, with Matthew chapter six, with, with the prayer. Jesus, Jesus said that when you pray, pray, pray it like this. Jesus said, he was, he was giving us something so prophetic. He said, yeah. when you pray, pray it like this. First, I have a father, which I didn't have a, hallowed be thy name. Watch what he says. Thy kingdom, what? Come. come. Yes, thy kingdom come. So what does that mean? Yeah. I can only call for the kingdom to come when I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I can't tell in a place that, I'm no yeah. yes, that I don't have residence. And yes. so when I'm in the kingdom of God, now what does that mean? That means now that I have diplomatic, spiritual, diplomatic immunity. Oh, sir. That's when Jesus yes. it up. He said, when you have spiritual di diplomatic immunity and the kingdom is now there, Araba, Shondo, and when the kingdom is now there, he said, now you can, whatever you bind on earth, it's already bound in heaven, so it's already done. Whatever you loose on earth is already mm -hmm. loose in heaven. Why? Because the principles of the kingdom of God is where I dwell, it's where I live, it's what I possess, it's what my mind is. 
and we have to understand that we're redeeming the time. I'm understanding this season. Yes, I had a good time. I walked in religion. I walked in tradition. But now God has shifted. We're in a different dispensation. God is talking now. Uh, Dr. Griffey talked about this. We have to understand God is moving strategically, and we have to be intentional. No longer, uh, I believe it's in... Um, First Timothy, I believe it's in Timothy. He said, the, uh, no, sorry, 17th Acts. He said, the day that God winked at our ignorance is gone. It's gone. The day that he winked, when he just, uh, that, that'll do a spirit. It's okay, son. It's okay, daughter. He pat you on the back. No, those days of God winking at our ignorance, those days are gone. God is calling us to walk in wisdom and to walk in understanding and to understand because the only way we're going to prove to the world, the Bible tells us, it says that the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's yes. us. That's us. The world is That's waiting. Right. They don't know what they're waiting for, but they're waiting for the day one. They need to see the Bashanda. They need to see the That's kingdom. They need yes. to see the kingdom. And we can't demonstrate the kingdom unless we possess and dwell in the kingdom. I'm giving it back to you, Apostle Douglas. I feel like I'm coming on, so I'm going to leave it right there. Man, oh, I wanted to come on you. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dr. Brett Griffin, this is coming to you. Uh, ah. I believe that we're in the days of a great harvest of souls, and the enemy is putting increased pressure on the saints to deceive them and keep them from fulfilling uh, God's purpose. But I believe that this is the time that uh, many have to go back and seek that old path. Ron, you said the foundation, the foundation so we can build upon it because the word of God has been so watered down now that it's, it's a famine in the land for the true gospel. And mm -hmm. I, I, I want to know your, your thoughts and strategies of how we can impact and bring that back to the level Amen. As it was in the past, when the word of God, when it was spoken, it had power and, and it resonated in the hearts and minds of those that were seeking deliverance. Amen. Amen. I'm honored to answer that question. That's through discipleship. One, one, something that the Lord has had me engaged in since 2020 is he mm. said, now I want you to start making kingdom disciples. And he chose certain groups of prophetic intercessors. And then he told me, he said, don't forget about my men. And there were certain men that I had established relationship with. He said, give them the kingdom for them. Give them from the perspective that I've shown you for men and then Z generation. He said, because he said, you, he said, the pattern is Jesus. What did Jesus do? He came identifying with humanity, bringing the kingdom, but if, mm -hmm. but Jesus knew he had to leave. So what did he have to do? He had to impart kingdom culture to a chosen group of men who could pass the culture to other nations and change the culture. Because if you, if you, if you can have rank to come into a region and that rank can rebuke the devil, the devil will back up. But if there's not a renewing of the mind, which starts with returning us to the presence of God, which goes back to the Le Levitical call, which goes back to the presence of God. The, the devil's not doing anything new, apostles. What he's doing is the same thing he did from the garden. And that was, I need to get them away from the presence of God, from hearing the word of God, that their dominion might be established and they might reproduce the image of God. So, so what do we have? We have a deception against Against our image in humanity, against our image of, of boys and girls, men and women, to get people away from the presence of God so that they can't receive words of life and therefore change the culture. And so what, what we need are those who have been processed. This is the time where the Lord is repositioning fathers and repositioning those who have been proven through the scriptures, not just studied it but have been proven through it. And then God can reveal to us the same way he said to the apostles, he said, teach them whatsoever things I have commanded you. So Peter, James, and John wasn't teaching the same thing as Paul. 
wasn't teaching the same thing as Philip, wasn't teaching the same thing as Mark. And so whatever we have proven from our time with the Lord, from our time of being processed, dying, dying and taking up our cross and being transformed to be the manifestation and walking in authority, when we, when we as leaders understand that call, the harvest of souls, and say, okay, Lord, who have you ordained to hear my voice? Is it in the street? Is it in the prison? Is it as a pastor? Is it how have you ordained? Is it leaders? Is it in the community? Is it in business? And then we begin to disciple and teach people how to, how to for one, understanding that you were born with a fallen nature. That fallen nature can only be eradicated through the blood of Jesus right? And then teaching them in whatever sphere of influence that they have, whether it's in ministry, kingdoms of men, teaching them how to interpret according to the mind of God and in that sphere of influence and then, and, and then multiply and then they make disciples. So everything God is taking apostles back to Genesis 126, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Mm -hmm. So then there has to come the process, which comes to transformation then the manifest, then the, as the transformation and the manifestation, then we reproduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. In the image of we re, the only thing we can get, the only thing I can give anybody is what I've already been given. I can't give any more than that. Mm -hmm. I can't build. Someone mentioned a foundation. Let every man take heed how he build upon the only foundation that any man can lay is the foundation of Jesus Christ. So let every man take heed how he builds on that foundation. So in the laying of foundation, the what is to be built upon the foundation, how are you to build and how are we to reproduce? How are we to take who we have become, our transformation and manifestation and be able to be led by the spirit of God as to who he's ordained to hear our voice mm. and, and then reproduce what's, what's been given to us. And that, because the, the devil's biggest fear is to be exposed. Yeah. That's his biggest fear. And so if we become the light, like G God, when he created and set things in order in the earth, he didn't say, I rebuke you darkness. He commanded the light to be. And I believe that those who are light, and if we become the light, if we walk as light, as light in the earth and be a preservative and assault in the earth, then darkness will have to flee. Turn the light on. Time to turn the light back on. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe Dr. Brett Griffin that you have, Hey Amen. You've hit a, a, a sore spot in community, <laughs> in the world, mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. once we turn that light on and sprinkle that salt, there will be no gender confusion. I'm coming to you, Apostle Kevin Bailey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> once we Amen. turn the light on and start sprinkling <laughs> that salt, there will be no gender confusion because he made, in the beginning, male and female. And they created this bound, this foundation of truth. But what we've been trying to do in the community is a tiptoe around light and salt, which is the answer to the problem and coming yes. up with illegitimate strategies that will not impact. Your thoughts on that, Apostle Kevin Bailey? Uh, oof. Okay. Uh, thank you, Apostle Thomas, for bringing that to me. But he here is... Well, the time that we live in, well, first of all, I'm going to read a scripture because what we have done is um, they have said that man uh, has defined marriage. Man mm -hmm. has tried to define marriage, but the reality is that God is the one who will define marriage. And in society, there was no trans. There's only two genders that were made. Let me let me read this to you. Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, and verse um uh verse five and six. Um uh he wrote this precept. Uh the Bible says, because of the hardness of their heart. The yes. Bible says, and Jesus answered, and this is in Mark chapter uh, 10 in verse 5 and 6 it says 
said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, man shall live his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become flesh. Mm. So then they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. The society that we live in, one week you could be a car, a bus, a, a, a truck, or <laughs> if you identify with a, 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 a animal, <sighs> you could be that. There was a young man that said, hey, I'm a cat. He put some claws on. This was all online at some point. Uh, spiked his hair black, put on eyeliner, all this stuff, saying he was a cat, and that if he was going to uh, tell, get them for a hate crime if they did not bring a litter into the bathroom. <laughs> are are y'all there? And he goes into the bathroom and stoops down and uses the bathroom on the litter. This is this is society that we live in, and the problem is uh, that salt that we are supposed to be. Because when we talk about salt, salt brings it's a preservative. It preserves. Yes, Mankind, the salt that is connected with us, we supposed to bring salt to it. We supposed to bring light. Light can never withstand darkness. This light is connected to Christ. And listen, when we fight, we fight from the victory that has won, been won through the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. That's why we fight, not to just get the victory, but it's made clear in the word of God, there were only two gender, no trans anything. And the bottom line is this, man of God and women of God, look, when, so my question to them, I've asked this question one time to them, a man dressed like a woman, a lady dressed like a man. And I said to you, I said to them, how can you be something that you hate? Mm. Because she was abused and molested. The wow. young man, he wants to be a woman. You know what? Because he has, he hates his mother and hates women. It's a spirit. And to me, when you uh, uh, possess those things and you say that that's what you want to be, what are you going to, are you saying that what God created was it good enough? What are you saying? You made a mistake, God, making me a man, making me a woman. You made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Listen, right now, right now they are installing urinals for those, whatever they identify with in some cities to stand up and use the bathroom and our children could be in those bathrooms. Our grandchildren could be in those bathrooms. Mm -hmm. yeah yes there's work to do so my, my thing is uh the bible says that when he created man it was very good even when you talked about the sons of god s-o-n-s that's referring to male and female not trans mm -hmm. s-o-n-s it's referring to male and female come on sir yes all right yes so apostle, there's no other gender. And man doesn't define, define marriage. God did. This was God's ideal, not man's. So what are we saying? That what God created wasn't good enough? No, you made a mistake, God. I feel that I want to be a bus this week. I feel I'm going to be a car, uh, you know. Uh, what kind? A diesel or regular? Four door or two door? What? what are you a bus this week? Or you? What? What is it that you want to be? And listen, I have one last scripture to read in the book of uh, Psalm one thirty nine. I want to read this to y'all, Apostle. It, it it says here in Psalm one thirty nine. Look! Look what he says. Look what it says here. In, in verse 13, Psalm 139, 
13. It says, for you form my inward parts. Did he make a mistake? You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully weighed. Listen, that word fearfully in there uh, means to be careful. That word means to, that you have to be very careful. It's referring to an artist, but it has to be, you have to be very cautious about not making a mistake. You have to be perfect. Go look it up, fearfully. Go look it up. Mm -hmm. So he did make a mistake. Let me finish reading. It says, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hid from you when I was made in secret. I skillfully wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Your eyes, y'all see this? In yes, verse 16, sir. saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written the day's fashion for me. When as yet, there were none of them. Yes. All of your days were written, fashion for him, everything. So well, the question, I guess, was it as a man or a woman? I'll give it back to you, Apostle. Well, man of God, you've laid the foundation and the principle for this course. <laughs> and I want to just take it uh, back to the scriptures in the beginning and, be, and, and caution us and those that are listening to be very careful with the vernacular and the mm -hmm. terminology that has been now transcribed in what we call versions of the Bible. Because oh, in the beginning, the Bible, especially in Genesis, the first chapter, it was just a duality, either mm -hmm. or, black, mm -hmm. white, light, darkness, male, female. Mm -hmm. And the terminology that's, right. that's coming up now about being gender fluid, mm -hmm. which that it erases what God has established and opens up the door and opportunities to bring in other options. I want to read this to you. And this question is coming to you, Pastor uh, Ron Harper. We are constantly faced with challenges and changes that require us to redefine the direction that we will take in life as men and women of God. But the Bible says, resist that, and it will flee from you. It will flee from you, okay? It only flees if you resist. Your thoughts on that, Apostle Ron? Praise God. Amen. I, I have to take that to Romans 1 uh, when I hear that going to Romans, uh, the first chapter where Paul, Paul says in that first verse, he said, Paul says, uh, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle and set apart mm. for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in his holy scripture regarding his son, who as to his earthly life, was a descendant of David and who through the, through the spirit of, of holiness was appointed the son of God, amen, in the power of his resurrection and in the dead of Jesus Christ. When, when you see the development and how Paul, God gave it to Paul for us to understand that, to be set apart and to understand the promise and to live by the very promise that Paul had been living by. There's no double standard here there's no double standard regardless of what the world says regardless of what we're seeing we have gotten so caught up into what the world says and the standard and because of the fact that the church has been silent and we've been so busy having church and it's, it's you know i have to go i, I want to i don't want to bring too much of the political part about this but we've become as a culture we be oh my god we become more concerned about the color of our skin than the spirit of God that is on the inside of us. Yes, come on we, now. We more precedent on being black, yeah, come on. being yeah. American, than what mm -hmm. the word of God says. We see it in the way we vote. We see it in the way that we respond to certain things mm -hmm. that happen in our community. But the scripture here, Paul's, Paul says that he's living and understanding the promise which was done beforehand, even by the prophets, amen, regarding the son. And he says, watch what he says, regarding his son and uh, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of God or was a descendant of David. So even beforehand, he kept the faith. He kept the mandate. He kept the principles of God. So as people of God today, we, we have to stop getting caught up in, in CNN. We have to get stop being caught up in what the news is saying and, and remember what the word of God is saying. You know, we, 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 we've, 
when, when Paul says in that fifth verse, he says, through him, we receive grace mm -hmm. and apostolic to call uh, all the Gentiles to the obedience. There it is mm -hmm. right there. That comes from faith for his namesake to mm -hmm. call the world, the Gentiles, mm -hmm. amen, to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But we have allowed, when we look at Apostle Douglas, when we look at, uh, when we go back, I, th I think it was uh, the prophet Isaiah, when the scripture uh, began to reflect on, on Mary. And the Bible tells us, it says that uh, the angel came to Mary and told her that you shall bear a son mm -hmm. and his name shall be called Emmanuel which means God is with us. And then the scripture goes on to say, and it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm. When we look at society now, we're seeing a reversal. God yes. is restructuring that right now. We're Because we're having this conversation, we see That's God right. realigning his first mm. principle. Mm. But when we look at how the church and how the world has been set up now, we've been riding uh, uh, on the shoulders of the government. What does that mean? That means that whatever they say, we go for it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whatever the world says, we yield to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we don't stand for biblical principles. We don't stand for what oh, God sorry. is saying this season. So God is master, reversing. Amen. He's reversing, amen, back to his original plan for man. It, Paul says it here. He says the gospel that he promised beforehand that was written by the prophets. But we have to be careful just, just because and, and, and just because uh, the government is able to give me a grant. And so now I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to yield to the principles that yeah. God told me to yield to get that. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Me, but because they owe me $500,000, because yes. come they, on. they owe me, I'm not going to say now. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say in Jesus' name. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to find a way to say that in his name or in our creator's name or or i'm gonna try to water it down or in christ's name exactly so so you know it, it reminds me several years ago i was working with this nonprofit and i was over their mentorship and um god was doing it we were blessing we, we were working with a lot of the kids that were aging out of foster care because there was nowhere for them to go they were being they were being scooped up with prostitution and human trafficking and all these things. So, uh -huh. so this the gay agenda came about and they were they were they wanted to start a program um to where they wanted to teach young kids how to be gay, how to be uh -huh. homosexual. Okay. And they asked me to head up this program. They were so excited to get the grant. There was a, like a million dollar grant for the organization that I was with. No. So they bring it to me with the person that brought the idea in, okay, about merging with this, this uh, uh, LGBTQ community, okay, just to get the money. So, and I went to them and because God had been using me to, to bridge the gap with the community and, 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 and mentoring all these young people. So when they brought it to me and I sat down with the CEO and, and, I, and while this person was in the house and I told him, I said, you do know who I am, right? I said, you do know who I am and you do know what I represent. I said, no, no offense to this, the person that's in here. I said, God loves everyone. I said, and I would never bash anyone. I mm -hmm. said, but uh, do you really want to take the chance with this million dollar grant and putting me over it? Because if I'm ever asked the question about whether homosexuality is right or wrong, do you really mm -hmm. want me to be the one to represent your organization <laughs> and take that chance. That's fine. <laughs> Amen. So, so Apostle, Amen. We, we have to be steadfast. The Bible said, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. I'm turning it back over to you, sir. Oh, hey, Pastor, good boy. Pastor Douglas. Pastor Douglas. Let me Pastor just, uh, go ahead, Pastor. Uh, let, me uh, jump in, let me jump in there for a minute. I, I got to jump in here. This is great because I want to go back because we got a lot of people online and this is awesome. I mean, because there was a Holy Ghost pivot in the podcast. Now, I don't know if y'all caught it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking about kingdom. Uh, Apostle, mm -hmm. Apostle Griffin was talking to us about kingdom and she was laying down some amazing principles. And there was a shift from her conversation to the next person, to the next person. And, and we went into a, a, a hot topic. Mm -hmm. And that was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, I want to say to many of you that are listening to this podcast, that 
as the church is evolving in this end time, yes. there's going to be a lot of confrontation. There's going to be a lot of conversation. Yes, yes and, it is. And, and we're and, and like, and what we're, and we have, and I believe, I believe tonight that God is breaking the ice over this nation. Yes, yes amen. Hear me, hear me by the spirit. I, I, I started this, I started off with Philippians 1 and 6, and Paul talked, he said, but to communicate, our it talks about communicating our, our faith. Mm -hmm. and the church has failed to communicate its faith. Ron said that person with the million dollar grant said, listen, I have a faith that I need to communicate to you what I believe. And That's people, right. The body of Christ has failed to, we, we've, we've become almost like cowards. Yes. We're, we're, not, we're, we're an army. We're, we're a bold army. The Lord has uttered his voice before his army, Apostle Douglas, and we have to become bold in, in what we believe and what we stand for in the love right. of God. We're doing it in the love of God. But I just want to point that out. That there was a Holy Ghost shift, Apostle Douglas. I know you picked it up in, in the podcast night, and that happens on these roundtables a lot of times. And so I just want to say, listen, we're here as apostles to accelerate the body of Christ into the move of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Whatever that is, we're going in that direction. And, we, and I just want to say that as the founder of this podcast, I had to stop in and make, make a station break there and say that. We confirm this message. Yes. <laughs> I confirm this message. Amen. I confirm the direction the Holy Ghost has taken us tonight. Thank all of you for what you're doing by the Spirit of the Lord. We have to be bold. We have to be uh, confronting. We have to, that's a part of the, the apostles' mantle of ministry. Yes. Not much of the apostles' ministry is not behind the pulpit. Yes. It's being sent into the community that's to it. accelerate and to demonstrate the truth of the word of God. And that's, that's what we're doing this podcast. And I thank you, Apostles. Thank all three of you for, for your words. And I just want to go ahead, Apostle. Let the Lord use me. I just want to jump in and say that tonight. Well, yeah, that, you, you're right on point because what I was going to follow behind Apostle uh, Ron Harper, yeah, you know you're touching the nerve. <laughs> you're touching the nerve today. Oh, I know. And uh, many people are driven by the wrong things, guilt, anger, resentment, fear, but mostly by compromise. Now, Apostle Ron Harper, you took us all the way back. Now, you remember... You were working for one agency. That's I was right. working for the other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we both, not knowing that you said the same thing, I was vice president of family services, and I turned it down yes. and said I would not receive the grant, and I was threatened to be fired. Hallelujah. Wow. I was threatened to be fired mm -hmm. because the point that we yeah. were trying to make is – and, and I think you said it, uh, uh, Dr. Bre Brett, if you're not living it out, it's illegitimate. Yes, sir. So what God is saying in this season, that we got to present our bodies. That's as right. Living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy and acceptable Amen. unto God. Yes, which sir. Is our reasonable service. But you hit a nerve, Pastor Ron Hopper, when you talked about these grants, because many ministries are funded by that. And mm -hmm. they rise with the stance because something I want us to always remember, and those of us that are out there, you may have a disagreement and you might have an agreement, but the minute you put your church mm -hmm. under the 501c3, mm -hmm. you have given up your sovereignty. It's in the document. Mm -hmm. That's why you always put it on the outreach or anything like that. Yes. But if you put it on your ministry, you're giving up your sovereignty. And many of us don't read that two, two to three paragraphs that mm -hmm. says that you now have given up the sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And that's why they can come in and demand certain things within your spiritual assembly mm -hmm. versus it being on the outreach when you said, OK, well, I don't I don't minister over there anyway. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me what to do here. What's happening in the state of Florida, and I'm sure it's going to happen everywhere else, they're raising the standards even for ministers, for preachers, for pastors. Really? And they're creating laws to bring compromise. It's coming down the pike in two and three, two to three years. Yes. We are so gung-ho because of the COVID money that was spread <laughs> to the community that we got locked in that mindset. Right. We got locked in that mindset. Remember, it was given with no strings attached. Right. But now that it was officially been declared over, 
Here comes the strings that are attached. Yes, yes. Here comes the requirements. Your thoughts on that, Dr. Brett Griffin? Um, <laughs> interesting enough, 30 years ago, the Lord retired me to himself. So I've been full-time to the Lord for 30 years, 10 years wow. ago, about 10 years ago. I was, the Lord still had me moving apostolically and was showing me apostolic is a function. It's not a title. Now I was focused on That's hearing right. what Evan was saying, but he was saying, but I want That's to right. show in Georgia. He had me to remain a California resident. He said, I want you to live in these different states from California the same way I want you to live in the earth as if you're from heaven. And he was saying to me, the problem is, is that my people have no revelation of heaven's infrastructures, of how mm. heaven moves. And so mm. when he said, now I want you to start your business. And I said, do you want me to make it a nonprofit? This was 10 years ago. He said, no. He said, I want you to pay your taxes because I don't want any other government telling you what you can speak. And so for the so for the past, so everything that I everything that I do under Harvest 2100 incorporated is according to the kingdom of God. And I and I take care of the taxes. And what it is, is you asked me a loaded question in every place in the Bible, starting with Abram. There was a system in place to where God raised up champions to overcome the system before David. So Abram had to come out of what was Babylon for God to start all over with a father, produce a people that would become a nation that he could give the kingdom. Then you had Joseph who had to go into Egypt. So you had the Egyptian system, which doesn't want to share revelation, just work up my system. You get nothing. Mm -hmm. It fills mm -hmm. you. It's a strong man that, that mm -hmm. binds God by Satakaye that binds God's people's minds with affliction, psychological yes. problems, physiological problems. Yes. And you have God's people working for systems of Egypt in the spirit who are mm -hmm. constantly going to the doctors because they don't understand they're under de demonic structure. And then you have those that, that later on with Babylon, you had Nebuchadnezzar. So you had God's people and he raised up the champion of Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. I mean, Abednego, right? <laughs> so he raised, he raised them up to stand for God because they were trying to impose a system to say who you will worship. And we need the champions, like Apostle Ball was saying, God is raising up an army that will for God I live and for God I die. And so, and, and then you had Sodom and Gomorrah, of course, mm -hmm. that system, it's not just sexual, it's, it's, it's perverted because it doesn't produce anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to feel good. I just want yeah. to, I, I'm not going to produce anything. I'm not going to multiply anything. And that system yeah. exploits you. So yes. that was deemed as the, the image, the image areas that people go in to be famous, et cetera. That's why the system is so corrupt because it produces nothing. And so what God is doing is yeah. calling different ones out of Babylon, out of mm -hmm. Egypt, out of Sodom and Gomorrah and say, come on, I want you to start that business I've been telling you about. You see what yeah. your community needs, get it mm -hmm. registered, do it exactly the way I tell you, connect with who I tell you to connect with, do not sign a contract with Gibeonites or those that you're going to have to deal with later on down the line and set up my kingdom structure because just like Joseph, I'm about to make you necessary. And I'm going to give Egypt a problem that only you have the answer to. And mm. this is what the Lord began to tell me, men of God, about 10 years ago, he said, I'm bringing forth some Joseph templates and I'm going to cause Egypt to have a problem that only my people have the answer to. Hallelujah. And then give them the access to Hallelujah. say, now, how do you think it needs to be done? Because it wasn't that Joseph interpreted the dream in closure. It was that Joseph was able to produce a system and an infrastructure that Pharaoh said, only in the throne will I be greater than you. And so even when the Egyptians themselves came to Pharaoh, he said, don't talk to me, go to Joseph. And that's what God is going to do to Apostle Ron. That's what God is going to do to, to the men of God, the Apostle Bailey's, the Apostle Balls and yourself that are saying, you know what? God is showing me something to produce here. God mm -hmm. will make Egypt give it to you. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. he will. He will mm -hmm. make them turn over their wealth and give it to you and say, you know what? We got problems we don't know how to fix. And since you want to do the work, 
look, you go ahead and do it. And the Lord is even saying to me right now, he said, and I don't even care that you're saying this on, on a national or worldwide, whatever platform, he said, because I'm still God and I'm still sovereign. And if I come to Pharaoh and say, let my son go that he may worship me, I'm me when I say, because you don't right. want to have to deal with the sovereign judgment of my hand because I'm still a God of war. And I will Amen. come for my own. And establish, and Joseph that said this before he died, men of God, he said, God will surely visit you and bring you from this place. Now, where did Joseph get that from? Because he grew up away from dad. He wasn't there when granddad Isaac died, and he wasn't around when great granddad Abraham died. So God had mm -hmm. to show him more while he was in Egypt. He said, and when you leave, people of God. He said, and when you leave, take my bones with you. That represents apostolic structure. So mm -hmm. God is going to bring deliverance that's mm -hmm. going to cause people to come out of bondage yep. and produce with apostolic structure and rebuild. And as this awakening is taking place and then rebuild for, for, for kingdom templates that God wants in the earth, in every area of society. Amen. Wow, woman of God, you, did you hear what you just said? Yes. When, you leave, when you leave your place of bondage, yes, sir. Make sure you take those apostolic bones with you. Make sure you take them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, first of all, I just want to stop and, and, and do a station break because you have been saying something similar with Dr. Brett has been saying for the longest time. You said, God going to give you something that's that the, the system is going to need the world is going to need mm -hmm. it's going to move uh, uh the vision move the ministry move the network into a region a realm that we've never seen before your thoughts on that the founder of the five-fold global traveling network by the way of a top apostle terry ball Amen. apostle <laughs> what we're hearing tonight Amen. is men and women of god is what i call spiritual intelligence Mm -hmm. it's, a diff it's a kingdom language, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's a language on another level. Mm -hmm. It's not on the church level. It's the church level is the outer court. You had the holy place and the most holy place. I call it the third day revelation. And, and what we're hearing tonight is third day revelation. We're hearing kingdom, kingdom conversation, kingdom language. You yes. Know? And, and some people, this, I know you need to listen to this two or three or four times. I encourage if you're a pastor, if you're a bishop, if you're an apostle not on the line, uh, pass this on to them and let them hear this, this revelation, hear this, hear this conversation, this communication, yes. this revelation of what is being spoken. Amen. Glory to God, because that's what we're hearing tonight, apostle. We're, we're experiencing kingdom revelation, kingdom language, and, and it's the, one of the books I'm working on now is called Spiritual Intelligence, because God wants us to understand the language of the kingdom. You know, and, and Dr. Brett said something that I believe so wholeheartedly, and my life is getting ready to change drastically in a, in a major financial way very soon. And she said something that God showed me 30 years ago. Uh -huh. and, and she said she didn't go the, the route of nonprofit, she went the route of for-profit. And, and she, she embraced you know, walking by the Abraham way, you know, the, the, the name changed it, receiving the, the H in your conversation. Yeah, and, and, I want to get into that. But his name, <laughs> Abraham, his name was Abraham, but yeah. God gave him the H. H out of Jehovah, and, yes, sir. Abram to Abraham. And what God is saying to many of us today by the Holy Ghost, I hear, speak, I'm speaking as a prophet tonight. The many of you that God said, I'm ready to change your conversation. I'm ready to change your name. Yes. I'm ready to take your ministry to another dimension yes. of conversation. Because there's, there's the whole apostle. I believe really, and I, 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 I want to say this, that the body of Christ recently is moving to the kingdom address of business opportunities right now. Uh -huh. I, believe that that's, I believe that's the new direction that we're going. Because when she spoke about Joseph, Joseph moved into a, 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 a position of business mm -hmm. uh, and, and running the business of the kingdom of, of, a, of a former kingdom, but God gave him the, the position of, of kingdom management. And the way our economy is going, we need to shift our ministries to kingdom ministries of ministry and business entrepreneurship 
I call them apostolic centers, uh, apostolic mm -hmm. centers, but we begin to not just minister spiritually to the people, but we need to understand the other side of the kingdom is the business part. And mm -hmm. many of you are listening out there, out there to, across social media today, God wants to shift your ministry into the Joseph anointing, mm. into the Nehemiah anointing. These are types and shadows. Yes. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you hear what we're saying by the Spirit of the Lord, these speakers are speaking to that by the Spirit of God. Hear the new language of the kingdom. Many of you guys call them to be Nehemiahs, to be Daniels, to be mm -hmm. Joseph type ministries, not just pulpit ministry. That's why I always say, Apostle, God has changed the address of the church. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm telling you that we have to begin to understand, interpret what does this new address look like? What does this new ministry blueprint interpret? What does it look like? And so as leaders, as pastors, as bishops, as apostles and ministers, we really need to go back into consecration. I was teaching some years ago a, a new wine skin for a new season. And the last thing I'll say, apostle, is that, see, that we, we're in a new season, but we're not really interpreting the season that we're in because we're in an old paradigm. Yes. Our minds. Mm -hmm. And Apostle Baylor, we need to go back into fasting and prayer. And I yes. said fasting and prayer, but we need I need Apostle Griffin. I need Apostle Ron and Bailey in my life. Mm -hmm. Many of you that out there listening, uh, you're not interpreting the language of this season because you don't have Peter, James, and John in your life. You just Ooh. you can't fly a solo <laughs> ministry right now. Yes, it's, right. More so, it's corporate now. It's corporate now. Yes, it is. Yes. And, and, I'm good at what I do because I have Apostle Douglas. Yes, I'm sir. good at what I do because I have Apostle Ron. I'm good at what I do because I have Apostle uh, Griffin in my life. It, it, other, and see, the other people is going to make your ministry a corporate success in this in this season of ministry. Now, I'm going to stop right. I can go on and on, but I just want to say, listen, mm -hmm. the language has changed. The conversation has changed. God wants to shift our ministries to, oh. to, to become Joseph-type ministries where we become kingdom-minded ministries with business yes. and spiritual territorial uh, aspects of ministry. Back to you, Apostle. Apostle Bo, you, you've said something significant. And by the way, I want to come to Apostle Ron when you was talking about CNN and you told us to stay away from <laughs> CNN. <laughs> the Lord <laughs> dropped something in my spirit and I think I wanted to share it with you when you said it. But uh, people, please stay away from CNN because CNN, when the question of change come up, when you say change, CNN say not now. <laughs> They'll move you away from the truth and give you more headaches by tell you, telling you yeah. more problems that are in the world. But here's what I want to say with uh, what Apostle Ball said and, and Dr. Uh, Brett Griffin. Uh, we're going to have to shift in the, into that modality because you can't drive the car from the back seat. And you can't... Mm -hmm the plane from a passenger seat. So you have to put yourself in the realm where God is driving you and moving you and connect with others that, that what he placed in your spirit will be stronger and more impactful. When we try to operate in silos and in isolation and mm -hmm. dominating and covering, you know how we do sometimes, you know, if, 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 if there's something going on that could benefit an organization, uh, because leaders are not there, they don't want any of their flock to attend. Mm. You understand? Yes. That? And we have to break that yeah, barrier yeah. down. Your thoughts yeah. on Pastor Kevin Bailey. Oh, boy. Listen, here. <laughs> listen, we have to move from a place of, listen. There's something that David did in the book of Chronicles chapter uh, 21 and verse 1. The Bible said that Satan filled David's heart in verse 1. And David began to number or count the people. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that some, because uh, David was a warrior. Uh, but listen. It kept them from moving into that apostolic dimension and going to war. He counted the people, but he trusted in the military and the people that he had instead of not in God. And this is where we are right now. We just count the people wow. and said, oh, yeah, it's power in numbers. It's, yeah, it's victory in numbers. It's, you know, yeah. 
we, we got to get as many people in as possible. And uh, 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 Dr. Brett said something that's key, okay? We are, in this season, we have to move from counting members and we have to move to making members count. And the discipling piece is where we moved away from. We have to disciple, we have to train, and we can't be afraid or uh, when we duplicate ourselves that who can take our position because really a title is a title, but the apostolic, the prophetic, that dimension is a function. It's a function. It's not just connected with a title. Yes, you identify by that title, but we have to move from county membership. We have to start making them count. We have to disciple. We have to train. We have to equip. All right. And why does it matter if, if someone's doing prison ministry? Listen, the U.S. is the number one country in incarceration. No, number two in incarceration. China is number one. So, so why would you do this ministry? Mm. And why won't the fathers? But the real problem is that we, the other problem is practically we have fatherless homes. It is 80% right now. And when you talk about the apostolic, you come to a father, yes. the one that embraced the apostolic. You know what he does or she? They put you in the area because it's a family mm -hmm. that you can grow in and yes. become what God wants you to become. Yes. You know how your kids want to play sports? You like to do this? You put them in that area because mm -hmm. it's what they want to do. And that's what we have to, because it's a family. Yes. Although they enjoy the benefits of <laughs> having your name, so your church name, none of that matters. Your denomination, none of it should matter. It is uh, raising them up. It's the discipling. It's training. It's equipping. We have to get back to it. We have to get back to prayer. We have to get back to fasting. Yes. We're in a time right now, and she talked about the Joseph system. Listen, it's broke. Uh, Dr. Brett talked about the system. It's broken. It's an Egyptian and Babylonian system. This is what's in place. If, if David wrote in Psalm 37, 19, that even in the time of famine, we will be satisfied, then Ooh. there must be a kingdom system in place. It's Psalm 37, 19. So even in a time of famine, you will be satisfied. Listen, even with Joseph, Joseph had the answer for the famine. But you know what the first thing he did? He brought all of his brothers to the table. That's it. He was crying, but he brought his family to the table. They didn't That's even it. recognize who he was. And he put this in place within a prison system. Yes, he did. Yes, he was he did. lied on and sent to prison. So That's there are good. some defects, <laughs> Apostle Thomas, in the system. That's so and good. listen, this is what happens when we don't grow them up. We have to move from spiritual daycares. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. We've got to move from spiritual daycares. And we've got to train up children. We got to take them off the move, the milk. Listen, some have baby teeth still in their mouth and they've drank the milk too long, so they're rotten. It's time to mature. Some should be teaching yes, and leading yes. others. Hallelujah. Yes. If yes. we look at Hebrews 5, 12 through 14, and the biggest problem is we're, we're not even ready to explain. I love what you shared, Pastor Ron, and Apostle Tom, he was talking about, well, hey, you know what I stand for? Most what compromise? There is a spirit of compromise within the body of Christ. And some of us are like this, bound. We're bound, but yet we say we're in Christ by what we call the world system mm -hmm. and being controlled by it. We're bound by Babylon. Listen, Daniel said we ain't going to eat the meat or drink the wine. Mm -hmm. 
We ain't gonna eat. We ain't gonna eat this. And we definitely are not gonna bow to Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead and put us in the, uh, the lion's den. We'll close the mouth of the devil. Put us on in his fire. There was, a, there was one that came in there. <laughs> they said, the, the, the king looked and said, I believe it's the son of God. He'll rescue us from the fire. Listen, we're in a time of purification. We're in a time of refining. And listen, I got bad news for some of you, but good news for the kingdom people. Because the word of God is not just a word, but it's of what? Power in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. I got good news for you. I got bad news for some. You know, church won't be as it was. It's time to father them. It's time to raise them up. It's time to duplicate ourselves. It's time to raise teams. We got to get off of the milk. It's rotten in their teeth. They're immature. Hallelujah. We have to get off the milk. It The, the meat belongs to... The, children. The, the, the meat belongs to the mature. Yes. Amen. Yes. You have to have uh, your, uh, your adult teeth in. You got to have that, you know, stick the right teeth in to chew that meat. We have, it's time to chew the meat. Yeah, yes. it's time to chew the we, We're not going to cut it down and water it down. Uh, we, we, this watered down gospel, we don't preach about sin. We compromise. We have to stop it. Uh, we must always be ready to explain. The Bible says, and I'm going to read this from scripture. In 1 Peter 3 and 15, it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Set, aside, set apart the Lord God in your hearts. Set him apart in your hearts. In verse 15, and it says, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks your reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Amen. And 1 Peter 3, 15 through 17, we must always be ready to explain what it is that we believe. We must take a stand. We have to get rid of the compromise. We have to get rid of friendly, uh, secret friendly churches and welcoming to sin. We have to get rid of Eli that refused to tell his sons to quit slipping, yeah. sleeping with the wife, mm -hmm. sleeping with the wife of this married man, sleeping with the women in the church because they bring a certain offering. We got to get rid of it. God, listen, Christ is coming back for a church without spot wrinkle or blemish and that's why the deliverance ministry is necessary because it gets the wrinkles out it gets the spots out yes sir it gets Hallelujah. the spots out the blemishes in our character it, so so we could be what presented what to the father yes. they use that term in verse 26 of ephesians 5 to uh, for marriage yes. that that's a why would a bride so the bride's dress must be dirty we have mm -hmm. to get the deliverance going yes well, and holiness is still right back yes. to you apostle thomas therefore we must be steadfast unmovable all yes founded in the work of the lord that that's our right may not be in vain pastor ron, uh, ron harper we're gonna have allow you to have your comments and then we're gonna turn it over uh, uh, to Apostle Terry Ball that he may read the comments and we take our seed. Praise God. Okay. I, I just have to say, this has just been so empowering, uh, yes. so refreshing. I mean, that's the word, refreshing. Amen. Uh, what the Lord is saying. Um, as different ones were speaking, the Lord took me uh, to Ezekiel, very familiar passage, uh, 37. And mm -hmm. um, just hearing the voice, we, we know that uh, we spoke about the uh, that the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. But the Lord mm -hmm. told me to take you uh, that first, that uh, 37th chapter. And I just want to read it. I know you're familiar with it, but I want to read it for you hearing real quick. Um, Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Yes. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord mm. and in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. Then he led me back and forth. Watch this. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw 
a great many bones on the floor of the valley. The bones were very dry. Here's mm. where I want to get what I, my point on the third verse. It says, and he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Mm. And then I said, Lord, you mm. know, alone. you know. So what the Lord gave me is that he's raising up a generation of men and women that know what God knows. Ezekiel mm. said, Lord, you know. Mm. Okay, he said, Lord, you know. Watch what he did. He took him and he took him back and forth so he can see with his natural eye and tested mm. him to see if you're going to see what I see. Mm. And then he asked him the question. He said, son of man, can these bones live? Mm. And he said, Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. God is raising up a generation. He's raising up a people that knows what God knows and what who's going to speak what God speaks. God told him to speak to those bones, amen, and to bring them to the place. God is raising up a generation here to speak to the church, to speak prophetically, to speak, to speak apostolically, even if it offends. And it doesn't matter how long they've been in their, in their state, in the state of the church now, it doesn't matter how long. That's right. God is saying that when he, those that he has preserved, those that he has bought for, he has bought for that reserve, amen, that has been brought to the front now. He says, when now, when you begin, he said, when you begin to speak, amen, things are going to happen. There will be a manifestation of what's being spoken. Why? Because I know what God knows and I'm speaking what God is speaking. This is what the Lord is saying to us, amen, in this season, begin to speak. And the results, you will see the results. Because in that, in that uh, uh, ladder in the verse, it says, and I prophesied mm -hmm. to the bones, and yeah. there was a reaction. I prophesied, yeah. and there was a reaction. Mm -hmm. We're coming into the season now that prophecies will not fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. God is bringing them forth. Why? Amen. And we're speaking what God knows. Amen. Back wow. into your hands. Wow. wow. Amen. This has been a powerful night. This has been a minute of night of information, dissemination, a night of prophetic utterance, strategizing. God has given vision for the future. Amen. I'm sure that many of you out there have been blessed, glory be to God, by the words coming from these powerful men and women of God. Amen. Glory be to God. And as usual, whenever I hear prophetic utterance or a blessing from the Lord, like Dr. Brett, Griffin that you've given us, the foundation that you've given us, Apostle Kevin Bailey, and always, amen, like to hear my friend and brother, Pastor Ron Harper, glory be to God. I always like to put a seed in the ground because I realize, amen, that the, whenever I put a seed on that word, it brings a harvest. Maybe I will never be able to meet that person in my lifetime, but the word of God is fruit, amen, it continues to grow. We pray that it fell on good ground. If you desire to be a blessing to the Fivefold Global Traveling Network tonight, amen, you can sow your seed at fivefold, the word dollar sign, the word fivefold, F-I-V-F-O-L-D, 2021. Glory be to God. And I believe there's a way that you can sell also. I think uh, Evangelist uh, Ball will type that, amen, in the chat line. Glory be to God, but I will be the first one to put the seed in the ground because I've gotten some nuggets tonight. Amen. I got the full course meal, really. Amen. I started off with the appetizer, started off with the appetizer before we got on the air. With but they laid that thing down here tonight. Apostolic and his before we got on the air. And I bless God for what I've got on the got to turn his phone down. <laughs> Praise God. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> well, we're still coming back. If you desire to sow a seed, you can sow at a dollar sign, the word fivefold, F-I-B-E-F-O-L-D, 2021. And Apostle uh, Evangelist Ball will be putting the Zell information up on the screen Amen. God has really Amen. blessed us tonight. really blessed us tremendously he blessed us so much we have so many comments glory be to god as you got <laughs> oh and then people were witnessing to the word of god again that is dollar sign 
the word fivefold, F-I-V-E-F-O-L-D, 2021. We turn it over to the founder of the Fivefold Global Traveling Network, Apostle Terry Ball. Apostle, man, listen, there's got to be a part two to this. <laughs> there's got to be a part two. That's the first thing I want to say. We got to have our, all our guests back in a couple of weeks. We got to work something out and uh, get them back on with us because this has been the true round table. That's one thing. And the second thing I want to say, that as many of you that are sowing your seeds tonight, and that, uh, as I always say about our sowing into the round table, because we love to be a blessing to others. We want to be a blessing to Apostle Brett Griffin's ministry tonight. Amen. As the seeds come in tonight, we're going to sow back into Apostle Brett Griffin's ministry that she's doing in Palmdale, California. I want to interview her and talk with her about her work, what she's doing there in Palmdale. And, 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 and the future plans for the rest of this year, we're going to be a blessing to her. And all of you, I want, I want you all to be able to, if you can, come back in a couple of weeks. We'll contact you personally and we'll conversate about that. But we need to continue this because there is something very strong. I felt such an apostolic acceleration tonight. Amen. Like I, said, we, we open, I really feel, Apostle Doug, that there's a conversation, there's a language that yes. we're speaking tonight that people need to hear. Yes. You know, there, there was a pivot Amen. in the podcast tonight. There was a holy, I said, I call it the Holy Ghost pivot. There was a pivot in the podcast. Ryan, you're a basketball player. You know about pivoting. <laughs> and there was a pivot tonight in the podcast. And uh, I'm telling you that I, I just feel that we're on to something. And I feel like that, that, that at, this t at this time that God wants to complete what he's began with us tonight by the Holy Spirit. So we want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit tonight. Now, excellent many of you that want to sow, any amount is a great amount. And if you know anything about our network since July of 1991, we, me and my wife, many people that have followed us, we've sown everything back into the kingdom of Amen. God. Much of what we, about 90% of what we received, we sow it right back in because we're believing we're a mighty, wow. mighty multi-million dollar harvest. Yes. Amen. What God has called us to do across this nation in the Caribbean Island. That as Amen. Because our assignment, Apostle Doug, is going to be to be a platform, build a national platform. Let me share our vision with you. Our, our vision is to build a national platform for Dr. Britt Griffin to stand upon, for Pastor Ron Hopper to stand upon, for the possibility to come and stand upon. We're grace to have favor with many people. We have relationships all over the place, but God. I, I like to say it like this because Dr. Grant, Grant is, a, is a basketball player, Ron's a basketball player, and Brother Bay looks like he's a football man like me. And, <laughs> but we all understand sports. And yes. I like to use this terminology in sports, that God's first string team is not even on the field yet. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And there's, there's a shift coming, Ron. There's yeah. a shift where God's going to say, he's going to blow the whistle and say, okay, I want the first string team on the field now. Hallelujah. And we'll get ready to see some, some players come to the field that's going to be so anointed Hallelujah. and so purpose-filled and purpose-driven and Christ-driven. Yes. You won't see their image. You'll see the image of Christ. It'll be no longer I, but it'll be Christ ministering through me. So we don't see that type yes. of history yet, but it's coming to the forefront. I call them the consecrated ones. Come on. The consecrated ones are coming to okay. the forefront, but I want you guys to that, that out there to sow your seeds, you have two ways to give. We have the Zelly. We're posting that right now. You can give us by Zelle. Or you can also go to Cash App. Maybe they prefer a more secure way to give. Get on, give on Zelle. Or you give on Cash App. We're going to be a blessing to Dr. Gr Brett Griffin's ministry. Dr. Brett, tell us a little bit more about your ministry and what you're doing and what you've done in ministry. Wow. Um, I, I want to... I want to share this with you in, in 89 that I had asked the Lord, I had made a covenant with him. And I said, at that time, I said, if you get me out of debt, I'll do whatever you tell me to do with my money. I was still in the Air Force. And the Lord did it with favor in about six months at that time. And I said, okay, how much do I put in the bank? And the Lord said, 
sow it into my kingdom and I'll take care of you the rest of your life. Well, I didn't know what that was. And so what that interpreted was when your pastors need to get get away, take leave, pay for it, watch their children and let them get away. Make your paycheck available to the church. And if there arise any need, you're going to write the check. And so now 30 plus years later, everything that I have, all my revenue, bank accounts, everything that's Harvest 2100s is the Lord's. I, I it is the Lord. So 100%, except for the basic necessities that I need, goes to the kingdom of God. And so I'm a chief visionary officer of, non, of a nonprofit. Thank you, sir. Of a nonprofit organization by a visionary Danielle Heller here uh, in, in Palmdale, California. And our fir- focus is bringing together businesses and nonprofits because of the hits and, and getting rid of the silos because of the hits that COVID caused certain businesses to close down. And we just gave off, we, we're, we're becoming a grand tour. And we had what was called Superhero Saturday in March. And we gave our first grant to one of our uh, profitable businesses. And so we meet on a regular basis and keep our eyes on the needs of our community, on the different businesses that need support. I'm also uh, so just- nice part of a board of a nonprofit called Generations Coffee, where we just acquired a, a space of a, a, a coffee shop and, and meals and families can come and play games with a capacity of 135 people. And we have different businesses that come into Praise that God. establishment. It's going to be generations, but you can look it up online. It's called Butler's Coffee. The Lord is changing the name under a nonprofit called Generations. And what we're doing is, is doing doing everything we can to say, and, and the vision was given to a young young woman dynamic named Nicole McMillian in the Antelope Valley who said, God, I know you want to do something with this. And so what the Lord, so she called me, she said, Dr. Brett, I know that God wants to do something with this. I don't know what it is. I said, make God a vow. According to according to Leviticus 27, make him a vow. And, and long to the short, she had applied for a grant. God didn't grant give her the grant before he, he brought the company over. And then two days later, gave her a $30,000 grant to help mm-hmm. put back into the community. And so mm-hmm. what, what God is using me to, to do is to give kingdom dynamics to those with vision who want to build the community and primarily who are believers and to say, look, do it like this. And so God has already have Joseph templates in operation that are becoming a, a panacea or preservation even to our very community and bringing us together. I'm also a part of a group of women. I, I miss y'all, business women of God, which is probably a total now of about 500 of all different ethnicities meet every Thursday morning to pray together uh, uh, somebody to release a, 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 a word of, of inspiration and from the scriptures and to encourage us to do by Rosie Alcarez to do business God's way. And then we go about our days, some are in real estate, some own restaurants. And so in all of that, the light and the salt that God said, this is why I want you in the Antelope Valley. As I, as, is to help bring kingdom template to those who have vision. And so that's some that's of what I do in most of the ministry. That's how we met Apostle Ball. Actually, most of the ministry I do is more nationwide. So I have disciples. I have 14 spiritual daughters in Ireland and Canada and across the United States, Texas, Louisiana, New Jersey, New York, all over the United States. And a spiritual son, Apostle Ron Smith, I think he's on. And he works with families in Phoenix, Arizona and works with, with a, a homeless uh, initiative, works with those seeking asylum, et cetera. And we will meet, to, we meet together on a regular basis for prayer, for a prophetic impartation and for them to be strengthened in everything that, that, that they do. So that in short is Harvest 2100 Incorporated. And the, the Lord gave me that name of bringing in the harvest for the 21st century. That's why it's Harvest 2100 Incorporated. Wow, so, that, that's wow. awesome. That, that is awesome. Yes. I mean, you, you, are, you are a very yeah. woman of God, but it's a great vision that you're doing. You know, Apostle Griffin, a lot of people don't understand that. And, 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 and as I was listening to your heart, it reminds me a lot of what we've done here. 
you know, some people are tired to give 10%. Many of us that really get over into the ministry and the call, we give 30, 40, 50% of our Yes, income. we do. Yes, we, we, we do. We give it all. And we do it for years yeah. and years and years. And most people will not understand that. But I heard it as you were talking, and I could see that you have lived like that. You have given your all. Yes. In support of ministry. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you for your support to the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. I'm and, looking uh, forward to I'm so glad we met. <laughs> oh yeah. It was it was another your covenant heart connection. Your spirit, sir. Yes, another <laughs> covenant you. connection. Amen. And thanks. So once again, uh cash out with Pastor Doug, can you type that in for us? Uh, yes, sir. Cash out with 5 4 2021. And our is uh going to be posted on the screen at 954 six one two three nine six zero and that's the way you can give and then we'll come we're planning on bringing our guests back all three of them if they're free to come back in I'll about a couple Absolutely. of weeks okay and we're going <laughs> to put another schedule together for the month of june so we can continue this conversation and when we come amen. back next time we'll be a blessing to another one of these men of god in the this work of ministry as they're going forth in the kingdom of god all right ladies uh, first dr, dr. brett your friend from the bahamas says hello Oh, what? Whoa. Oh, hey. Freeport and NASA. Everybody? Sister Bob. Oh. With, hey. God bless you. Hey, that's my that's my honey. That's my friend. <laughs> hey, hey, man. That's my riding partner. <laughs> yes, it was a divine setup. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. It's so good to hear your voice. Amen. Likewise. Oh, Amen. Wow. Love you. Amen. Love you too. Amen. 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 And Sister Paul's going to read some of our comments. Thank you. Thank Amen. You. Uh, this round table has just been so awesome, phenomenal, dynamic. Oh my God. It's just been so tremendously filled with the wisdom of God. And I salute each and every one of you. Glory to God, Apostle Bailey, Pastor Ron Harper, Apostle Douglas, Apostle Terry, and of course, amen, my new, amen, friend and sister in, in Christ, amen, Dr. Brett Griffin, hallelujah, and um, I, I have to apologize, I did lose some of the uh, earlier comments, so I'll just read what um, I see here. Uh, Frankie McDaly said, preach. Joyce <laughs> said, yes, amen. Glory, come on. Uh, Ron Smith said, judgment begins in the house. And I remember earlier comment because it caught my attention where he called Dr. Brett, the Navy SEAL general of, I believe that's the East Coast. I hope I got the coast right. <laughs> um, West Coast. West Coast. Oh, West Coast, sorry. Amen. And uh, let's see here. He also said judgment begins in the house. Um, De Jesus said holiness is still right. And amen. Uh, let's see here. What else we have here? Denise Daniels said very refreshing. Thank you all. Uh, De, Jesus, De Jesus, sorry, says refreshing indeed. Amen. So thankful for you all mighty kingdom leaders. Um, Nicole said so good and God's mind and eyes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kimberlyn said, reveal your mind to us that we may speak what you tell us. See only what you show us and hear only your voice. Glory to God. Uh, let's see. She also said, this has truly been a blessing. Uh, Ron Smith said, speak apostolic, uncompromise. Um, Kimberlyn said, indeed, repression is an act of obedience. Also, meat, potatoes, and gravy. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Denise, <laughs> Denise Daniel said, what a blessing. Glory to God. Uh, Nicole, no, Nicole said, truly a great word indeed. Uh, Brother Walter said, yes, come back. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, Ron Smith says, amen. We honor Dr. Brett A. Griffin. Praise God. Uh, 
Dr. Brett said, kingdom disciples, look at God. Hallelujah. Let's see. Ron Smith said, Satan is in trouble. If the first string is not on the field. <laughs> Blessing, sir. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Let's see anything else. Uh, Dr. Vanetta said, amen. Thank you, Father, for the woman of God. Um, Ron Smith said, powerful voice for this season. Dr. Brett A. Griffin. Uh, McCall said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Apostle Brett Griffin, her reach, her poor, her sacrifice, and her love. Praise God. And Patricia Main said, yes, we are blessed to have Apostle Brett in my life. Glory to God. She's from you got Canada. She's, she's, in, she's a native, she's a Cree warrior from Canada. Amen. 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 And, and a leader in, in among tribes, bringing restoration to families um, in that region. Her father was a chief, powerful woman, woman of God. Powerful Amen. woman of God. Yes. Well, and thank you all for your comments. We lost a lot of comments tonight because of that. I mean, the time span was so was so long that we had a, a hundreds of comments tonight. We couldn't read them all. But we want to thank you all for your comments and thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank Apostle you. Douglas for being our moderator tonight. You did a great job as always. Yes. Thank, thank you, uh, Apostle thank you. Bailey. Amen. From, from Indianapolis, Indiana. And also our good friend, Apostle Ron from uh, South Florida did an outstanding job. And like Apostle Griff said when we came on, something concerning the men of God. Yes. And, and, and some, there's, there's something happening with God's men in this season that there's a repositioning with us. Amen. And I, I felt that I won't go into that tonight, but I just thank you for those comments that she brought out. And, and we didn't really get too in depth with it, but I understood what she was saying about the men of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the order of God, God is setting them back into their rightful place to work yes. in the end with the women of God together as a team, amen, of ministry. So thank you all for your time. Apostle Doug, do you have any more comments before we close out? I want to ask Pastor Ron to close us out tonight. I just have a question for Apostle Kevin Bailey. I heard you mention uh, uh, Apostle Ivory Hawk, uh, Hopkins, and I said, well, wow, they're talking about Lower Delaware, and that's where I was born. Grew oh. up. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, that's uh, my friend. That's your friend? Yes. That's your friend, yeah. I we, know him real well. Yes. Yeah, we grew up in the same area, uh, Lord. Okay. Northern, Southern than I was. I was in Milford. The general. He's an yeah. awesome man of God. Yeah, yeah that's my friend. Yeah. Yes, he is. Awesome. God bless you. Well, listen, this was awesome. Round two is coming up in a couple of weeks, and we just appreciate you. Thank you so much for all that you do. And we just uh, uh, welcome you back on the second round Amen. with this same fire. Look Amen. Cool. Once again, God bless everyone. Want to pray over Pastor Ron? Can you pray, pray over the gifts and give us closing comments as we close out tonight, Pastor Ron? Offer. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you so much, God, for just who you are, for your love, your kindness, and your mercy towards us. Thank yeah. you for allowing us to gather together. Father God, in your name, and you said and you promised us, God, and you fulfilled it. You say anytime we gather together in your name, and if there's anything on this earth that we touch and agree on, that you're in the midst of us. Thank you for being in the midst. Thank you for revealing yes. yourself through your word and through revelation and through through the, through the prophetic, oh God. Thank you for this apostolic movement, oh God. Thank you for not having a deaf ear, God, to what you're saying to your church and to the body of Christ in this season, Father. We bless you now. Now, Father, we pray, oh God, Lord, that the words that have been spoken and what's been revealed today, Father God, has found good grounds, oh God, to dwell in, good soil, oh God. Nothing has yes. fallen by the wayside. Nothing has fallen among the thistles. Nothing mm -hmm. has fallen among the thorns, oh God, but all has fallen on good ground. And Father God, we prophesy, oh God, to those grounds, God, that it shall bring forth fruit in this season and mm -hmm. the seasons to come. We bless you for it now. We thank you, God, for this fivefold 
uh, ministry, Apostle Terry and Apostle Douglas, oh God, and the entire oh, five-fold uh, traveling network, God, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we go forward, God, with this, we pray the grace of you, God, to be upon each and every one of us. We thank you for the seeds, God, that's being sold, oh God, into Apostle Brett and her ministry, God. Father, we yes. pray now a thousandfold return back to those who have sown in Jesus name. We bless you now and we thank you in Jesus mighty name God we pray. Amen and amen. 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 God, bless. God bless everyone. Have a great weekend. You too. Yes. Okay. Yes. Global traveling network and find the world one city at a time. Just imagine a movement, a global movement of the fivefold doing exactly what the word of God declares. Who it says in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So this is the vision of the fivefold global traveling network given by our visionary, Apostle Terry Ball. Now, it's over 30 years now that I've been in this uh, facet of ministry, the kingdom ministry for networking the body of Christ, bringing the body of Christ together. And I first want to thank God for my wife, Evangelist and Pastor Michelle. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Yes, it's, it's great being here today. And, um, you know, work, networking is very important, you know, because Jesus Christ himself prayed that we be one as he and the Father are one. And this is the goal for the body of Christ today, to come together as one. What you give us all today? At 954-552-3656. Representatives are standing by. And just remember, the five-fold global traveling network is edifying the world one city at a time. Five-fold global traveling network edifying the world one city at a time. Just imagine a movement, a global movement of the fivefold doing exactly what the word of God declares. For it says in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But this is the vision of the fivefold global traveling network given by our visionary, Apostle Terry Ball. Um, it's over 30 years now that I've been in this uh, facet of ministry, the kingdom ministry for networking the body of Christ, bringing the body of Christ together. And I first I want to thank God for my wife, Evangelist and Pastor Michelle. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Yes, it's, it's great being here today. And, um, you know, work, networking is very important, you know, because Jesus Christ himself prayed that we be one as he and the Father are one. And this is the goal for the body of Christ today, to come together as one. What do you give us a call today? At 954-552-3656. Representatives are standing by. And just remember, the five-fold global traveling network is edifying the world one city at a time. Five-fold global in the world one city at a time. Just imagine if we a global movement. But the fivefold doing exactly what the word of God declares. Who it says in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 of the some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So this is the vision of the fivefold global traveling network given by our visionary. Terry Ball. Yeah, it's over 30 years now that I've been in this uh, fast of ministry.